Sea waves gently crashed against the coastal sand. The bright rays of the sun sparkled on the water. Wind power plants could be seen in the distance. The loud ringing of bells could be heard from the luxurious temple. The voice bitterly declared that they possessed a secret that had no analogues in this world. The blonde walked with measured steps along the high-ceilinged hallway. The voice claimed that they would never surrender to the power of Morpheus, nor would they accept change until the final purification. Turning the corner, the girl asked if Angie had finished cooking. The girl remembered that when noble blood is shed, those who survive will be given imperishable life. The little girl folded her hands and asked if they could go now. The girl realized that time would surpass eternity, and eternity would be blessed. For the first time in her life, the girl was invited to the Duke's estate. She was incredibly happy about this event. The blonde has lived on Cullinan Island all her life. Dense beech forests grew on that island, and blue waves splashed along the shore, crashing against huge rocks. The island was rebuilt by survivors of a devastating war that was fought on the mainland for many years. People who fled the war zone turned the small island into a prosperous place. Cullinan was one of the few places where people of different races could live together and bond with each other. The word relatives. The people were guided by the Calum faith, and all people followed the same goal. The blonde moved to the island with her parents when she was still very young. The girl did not remember anything about her native continent. She realized that those terrible memories were unnecessary. Now she was happy. The blonde knew that she loved the island with all her heart. The girl could not imagine a more ideal place than this island. She knew that prosperity was possible thanks to the favor of the duke and his family. The bay horses tapped rhythmically along the path that ran through the middle of the forest. The little girl was delighted with how the duke's carriage looked from the inside. The girl still could not realize that this was really happening to her. She couldn't believe it last night. The girl could not realize that it was she, among all the other people on a rather large island, who was invited to join Lord Kalek. The young man was the only heir of the Blackwell family. His family were the rulers of a beautiful land. Unfortunately, the young aristocrat was locked within the walls of his estate due to a protracted illness. The woman ordered her daughter to visit the Lord once a week. Angie kept the ruler company. The mother warned the girl in advance that the illness made the ruler very whimsical and sensitive. She also told the little girl that the Lord might be hostile towards her. Angie knew that she had to visit the ruler for the sake of all the inhabitants of their island who were indebted to the Blackwell family. Angie stood in front of the huge gate, not daring to knock on it. The baby's golden hair was tossed by the sea breeze. The girl hoped that the gentleman would like what she had prepared for him personally. She knocked hesitantly on the door. The huge gate swung open, and an elderly woman greeted Angie. That lady was the head maid of the Blackwell family. The servant's name was Louise Dunce. Bowing deeply, the girl greeted Mrs. Dunce. The woman sternly and rather dryly asked Angie to come through. The maid, looking over her shoulder, said that the young master was already waiting for a guest. The blonde took hesitant steps along the red carpet of the ducal estate. She looked at the interior with admiration. The girl was delighted how luxurious and elegant the decoration of the house was. Angie had the feeling that this place was from a completely different world. Walking slowly behind Louise, the girl looked at every detail with admiration. Noticing an empty space, the blonde assumed that there should have been a portrait of Lord Kylik hanging there. Angie, looking at the high walls, realized that there was no portrait at all. The little girl couldn't even imagine what the Lord looked like. The girl wondered if the Lord had the same gray-blue eyes as Duke Edward. Glancing at the curious little girl, Louise asked the guest to follow her. Very nervous, the blonde hurried after the woman. The headmaid reported that Angie had a few things to remember, and she warned that the blonde would not see the gentleman's face. She recalled that the Lord was not feeling very well, and if the girl thought that something was wrong, she should have called for help. Louise asked the little girl to answer the question only when asked and to refrain from unnecessary comments. Crossing her arms, the little girl explained that she understood Madame's advice perfectly. Knocking on the door, Angie asked the gentleman if she could enter the room. The room was twilight, illuminated only by small candles that hung near the ceiling. The maid said that she had brought the girl for the master. Rising from the bed, the brown-haired man asked if he had said that he no longer wanted to see guests in his room. The blonde was surprised that the Lord did not want anyone to approach him. There were rumors that the reason that the gentleman did not leave the estate was intensive therapy using chemistry. The Lord underwent dangerous treatment during his long illness. The guy's face was disfigured, and his terrifying appearance could make people freeze, as if they had encountered a gorgon jellyfish. And because of this, no one could dare to look at Kylek. The little girl assumed that the guy didn't want her to be in his room. The blonde felt nervous inside, but not because of the master's face. 
Bowing, the maid asked for forgiveness for not asking the guy's permission in advance. The Lord assured that he understood perfectly well that the woman could not disobey his father's orders. Kalek explained that on this day, he would forgive the woman. The young master warned that next time he would not be so merciful and asked him to leave him. Bowing, Louise said that she had accepted the master's order. The woman grabbed the blonde by the shoulder and whispered that she should come and do what she came for. The baby got stuck and didn't know what to do. Angie began to doubt that her presence at the estate was normal. The girl remembered her mother's words and did not understand what to do. The little girl did not want Mr. Kalik to drive her away. Seeing the frozen blonde, the young master ordered her to come up. Angie obediently walked towards the young duke. The brown-haired man asked the guest not to come too close and sit not far from the window. From behind the curtain, Kalek asked what the name of his young guest was. In a voice trembling with excitement, the blonde introduced herself by the name of Angela Rizdal. The girl assured that her name could simply be Angie. The blonde said that she and her family lived in a house on the north coast. The Lord asked why she came into his possession. The little girl was very nervous, realizing that he could find her story quite boring. The girl understood that if the gentleman allowed her to stay in his room, then she must tell him what she had prepared. The blonde said that she came to the property to tell him a story. The brunette asked in surprise what the story was. The girl explained that this was just a figment of her imagination. Angie asked if the gentleman wanted to hear her story. The blonde said that after she received an invitation from the guy's family, she thought that her greatest passion was reading. The girl insisted that sewing and embroidery were the skills in which she was most confident. She said that her lace would never be able to impress a young aristocrat who was accustomed to luxury. Angie assumed that he had read a lot of books while he was locked in the mansion. The girl assumed that the guy's collection of books was superior to her own modest collection. The little girl realized that none of the stories would be new to the Lord. Angie assumed that one day the guy closed his book, looked out the window, and noticed the outlines of clouds that floated past, and reminded him of scenes from fairy tales. The girl was sure that he wanted to talk to someone who imagined the same picture as he did. The blonde assumed that it was because of this that she had been chosen as a companion for the young aristocrat among all the children on this excellent island. The girl was sure that among the stories that she could tell, there would be those that were already known to the young man. Angie said that there were stories for which she herself came up with the endings. The little girl asked if the young master would be so kind as to listen to her and share his thoughts. The blonde promised to tell the guy her own thoughts and intentions. She explained that if he said that it was complete nonsense, then she would not be offended. Sitting behind the bedside canopy, the brunette sighed heavily. The Lord explained that if the baby was offended, it would not affect him in any way. The girl lowered her eyes and realized that Kylek was completely right. And so as not to be upset, let the caustic remark fall on deaf ears. The young master asked to tell the stories that the girl had prepared. Angie accepted the young master's order with enthusiasm. The guy warned that if the story seemed absurd nonsense, he would not hesitate to throw her away from the estate. Trying to calm down, Angie tried to do what she always did, since everyone in the church liked her stories. The blonde asked if the guy was familiar with the story of the Kuma Sibyl. The girl explained that she wanted to tell about this ancient Greek prophetess. As she spoke, her throat burned with thirst, and her gaze from behind the tool unsettled her. The young master allowed her to finish the story without interrupting her or sending her away. After such an exciting time, the door of the huge mansion slammed shut. Kylek asked the baby to come at the same time next week. In parting, the Lord wished the blonde a safe journey and called her by name. When she left the master's mansion, the girl was sure that this was a sign that she had succeeded. Little shoes merrily tapped their heels on the tiles of city roads. Angie realized that her fear was in vain, and most likely the young master was not as difficult to please as she had originally thought. The girl was excitedly thinking about what she could tell the young master next time. The brunette followed the narrator with his sky-blue eyes. Small waves crashed against the sandy shore of the island. The moonlight picked out a silhouette from the darkness of the night. The brunette wiped away beads of sweat after hard work. The guy had hoped that he could escape from this damned island. Elliot remembered his parents telling him what a precious blessing his life was. The inhabitants of the island were sure that Duke Blackwell had gathered all the survivors of that terrible war and invited them to live in prosperity on a safe island. The people firmly believed that the mainland was a living hell. The guy was one of the few who realized that every day on the island was unbearable. Elliot pushed his boat away from the shore with a large oar. The brunette understood this, that the world was much larger than this damned place. The guy wanted to take the opportunity to explore a lot. Elliot took a large supply of food and water with him and finally decided to set sail. The guy couldn't believe that escape would be so simple. The brunette watched the silhouettes of his hometown, which slowly disappeared beyond the horizon. 
the guy couldn't understand why no one even tried to pull this off. The windmill loomed menacingly above him. A dolphin could be seen in the outline of the object, and the old mechanisms creaked, causing horror. The guy remembered that the mill formed the border between the island and the outside world. The guy looked at her in horror, because it turned out that she was much larger than she seemed from a distance. Elliot understood that as soon as he sailed past the mills, he would finally escape from the island. A sharp arrow flashed near the guy, breaking the night silence with a whistle. The brunette lay trembling with fear at the bottom of his homemade vessel. There was horror and a silent question in the blue eyes. The guy begged not to do this, but soon a heartbreaking cry was heard. Windmills loomed ominously over the dying guy. In the depths of the sea, blood began to dissolve in scarlet stains. Kneeling near the bed, the brown-haired man begged for blood. The floor of the cage was covered in scarlet drops. The young master silently watched the monster as it pulled its limbs, wanting to taste the blood. Soon the starry sky gave way to midday. The bright rays of the sun illuminated the island. The girls chatted pleasantly among themselves, weaving macrame. Looking at her student's work, the brown-haired girl noticed that Angie had incredible talent in embroidery. One of the girls noticed that it was incredibly thin lace. Everyone who was at the master class did not understand what the blonde secret was. The craftswoman smiled and thanked her for the praise. Taking a closer look, the teacher asked what the names of the flowers that the little girl embroidered on each product were called. The blonde shared that the plants were called marigolds, and she used them as a signature. The girl said that these were her favorite flowers, and every time she saw them, her soul felt warm. The blonde dreamed of one day making clothes that would be inspired by her favorite plant. The little girl explained that she sincerely wanted to sew clothes that would make someone smile. Angie clutched her product tightly to her chest. She wanted such clothes to be a reason for people's joy. The woman assured, supposedly had no doubt that her student would succeed. Smiling, the girl explained that the baby would create the most incredible clothes on their island. The blonde claimed that Angie would become her personal seamstress. Letitia was the only daughter of the ducal steward. Pressing the craftswoman to herself, the girl assured that she should sign a contract exclusively with her. Angie noticed that her friend was so silly at times. The man noticed that the girls were very charming. The brunette claimed that it was wonderful when the children got along with each other like that. The daughter of the ducal manager invited her friend to sign a contract about their cooperation right now. The adults started talking about how the corpses of small animals had been found throughout the forest. Residents did not understand who could commit such an atrocity. The blonde felt sincerely sorry for the little creatures. Running up to the crowd, the blonde asked everyone to come up. Residents of the island surrounded the man, asking what happened. One of the women suggested that he drink some water. In a trembling voice, the man asked not to waste time. The blonde explained that Elliot's body washed up on the south coast. Residents could not believe that such information could be true. The woman strictly ordered her students to return home. The brown-haired woman asked her charges not to turn anywhere. People were outraged at what could have happened to the Hawkinson's only son. The blonde reported that the victim tried to leave the island by boat last night. People could not understand how he dared to do something like that. The people believed that it was God's punishment for the fact that the deceased had betrayed the favor of the Duke of Blackwell. The man suggested that they should have taken the opportunity to remind the children that they should never have left their home island. Residents told the children that the guy tried to leave the island last night, and that he was attacked by a school of sharks. The accident struck fear into all the people of the island. The parents of the deceased grieved inconsolably for several days in a row. The blonde had never seen anyone grieve greatly before. The brunette greeted Angie with a smile. The girl greeted Mrs. Hawkins. The woman asked where the baby had gone. She noticed that the weather was beautiful, like God's grace. Mrs. Hawkins's basket contained many pink roses. Smiling for the sake of decency, Angie realized that the woman, who had been heartbroken just yesterday, felt much better. It seemed strange to her that there was not a shadow of sadness on Miss Hawkins's face, as if the sad memories had been erased. When the girl came to Kylek, she said that Miss Hawkins's behavior seemed a little strange to her. The little girl explained that she had never felt sad before, and she wondered if this feeling could disappear in the blink of an eye. The brunette suggested that there might be more behind this than meets the eye. The guy asked if the blonde wanted to have a cup of tea. The Lord was sure that a hot drink would help the girl calm down a little, because she was frightened by what she saw. Angie thanked the young master with a smile. The guy warned that if they started talking about this, he would advise the blonde to keep her observations strictly between them. Lord explained that others might think the girl was suspicious because she was having similar thoughts. He pushed the small cup away. The blonde promised to be more careful and thanked Kylek. The girl realized that she had not even considered this possibility. The little girl hoped that the young master did not find her comment reprehensible. 
Angie wondered if she could interest the brunette. The Lord noticed that if the girl had even a drop of common sense, she would have done so, even without his wishes. Sighing heavily, the blonde realized that she had rushed to conclusions. Angie took another sip of tea and noticed that the drink had a wonderful aroma. The girl noticed that the contents of the mug were slightly different from the pink tea that everyone usually drank. Angie was sure that her parents would probably like the drink. The young master assured that if the girl liked it, she could take the tea leaves with her. Kalek watched his guest carefully through the small mirror in his room. The brunette promised the little girl that he would inform Louise about her preferences. A small sparkle appeared in the girl's green eyes. Angie explained that she was very grateful to the guy. Kylek explained that he wanted to ask something about the story that the blonde told him last time. A silent question appeared in her emerald eyes. The Lord recalled that the guest told him about the Kumian priestess, who longed for immortality and received a thousand years of life as a gift from Apollo. The priestess watched as her body slowly withered over the years. The woman realized that this was not a blessing, but a curse. The guest was glad that the young master remembered everything. Kalek asked what the girl's answer would be if Apollo came to her and offered immortality and eternal youth. Smiling, the little girl explained that most likely she would have rejected such an offer. A little confused, he asked why her answer was that way. After thinking a little, the blonde explained that at first she would have wanted to accept such a gift without question. But the beauty and meaning of life originated from ephemerality. Angie explained that even the most exquisite and delicate flowers withered when their lifespan came to an end. The little girl explained that new, no less noble shoots grow in place of old flowers. The blonde suggested that this could be called providence. The Lord was surprised that immortality meant nothing to her. Angie responded positively with a smile, suggesting that many would like to live forever. The girl asked what the young master's answer would be. The brunette couldn't believe that there was someone like her left on the island. After some hesitation, Kalek began his dialogue, but was interrupted by a knock on the door. The maid informed the guest of their estate that it was time for her to leave. The young master quickly jumped up trying to stop his interlocutor. Bowing, the girl promised to return in a week. The door slammed loudly, leaving the guy alone with the maid Louise. The elderly woman asked what the gentleman thought about the new medicine. Sharply pushing aside the translucent tool, Kalek asked not to call the girl that. The young master explained that his mood was spoiled by the mere mention of such a word. The guy slowly descended into the basement, whose walls were dimly illuminated by small torches. Kalek asked his father what the word medicine meant. The brunette asked what would happen if someone was chosen as his medicine, and what would happen to that person. A menacing shadow loomed over the boy, causing his legs to tremble and him to unconsciously back away. The man asked why his son said the word, if. Squeezing the metal bars tightly, the brown-haired man assured that the boy's blood, if it chooses someone, there will be no turning back. The father claimed that if Kylek's blood chose someone, then the cure would belong to the guy forever. Breaking into a scream, the young lord wondered if this was the reason why he killed his mother. The guy asked if the woman was just taking medicine. The medicine was a person who protected the owner, offering his blood, until that person was left with skin and bones. This story began with a terrible curse. The calamity was struck by something that people should not dare to wish for. The maid, distracting Kalek from his thoughts, asked whether the new medicine was suitable for the guy. The guy did not want to follow the same path as his father. Events are transferred to a workshop flooded with sunlight. The girl screamed in surprise when she learned that the Duke had other heirs. The girls sat at the table around sewing tools. One of them said that she overheard this while the adults were talking. Many years ago, Duchess Eugenie gave birth to many children, even twins, but the babies died soon after birth. The only surviving child was Lord Kalik. Shortly after the birth of the surviving heir, the woman died suddenly. The friends began to talk about how the medicine the young master was taking had disfigured his face. The brown-haired woman said that she had heard the opinion that the Lord had become like a terrible monster. The girl claimed that people were worried because the Duke of Blackle was unwell and his only heir was locked in the estate. She was sure that Kalik had a bad character and beat the servants every day. Angie looked back at her friend, explaining that the young Lord was not at all as rumored. The blonde asked if her friend was too hasty with conclusions, the girl said that the young master was a little rude, but in fact he was quite sensitive and insightful. Wary, the brown-haired woman asked how the girl knew about this. The girl asked if Angie had seen the young master in person. The blonde remembered that her mother ordered her visits to Kylek to be kept secret. The girl explained that she wanted to say that it seemed wrong to her to support such gossip. The baby reminded that it was the Duke's virtue that allowed them to live in abundance. Gently twirling her hair on her finger, the brown-haired girl agreed with her friend's opinion. 
Letitia noted that the blonde was right, and they had no right to judge the young master's character. Clinging tightly to Angie, the girl suggested that the Lord's face must have been repulsive. Drops of cold sweat ran down the baby's face. The blonde realized that she still didn't know what the young master looked like. The girl only knew that Kylek was tall and had a deep voice. Angie remembered that despite the guy's inherent composure, he was attentive to others. The girl realized that until now she had not thought about what his face was like. The baby realized that at first, she was afraid of Kylek, because she expected that he might throw her away. The blonde realized that she couldn't get Letitia's words out of her head. The girl sat in anticipation of a new meeting with the Lord. The servant told her that Kalek was doing business in his office. Angie began to hope that she would be able to see the guy's face after these circumstances. The blonde waited for the young master for a long time and soon began to feel a little sleepy. In order not to fall asleep, the girl went to the window and looked at the luxurious landscapes of the ducal garden. Angie realized that her master could see exactly the same landscape every day. The girl was delighted with the beauty, and she was sincerely sorry that the Lord could only watch this from afar. The blonde realized that she didn't know how seriously ill Kalek was. The little girl's eyes sparkled with hope that they would one day be able to walk together. Sitting down next to the panoramic window, Angie quickly dozed off. After a long time, a gentleman came into the room. Kylek, seeing the sleeping guest, carefully threw the blanket over her shoulders. The brunette gently stroked her beautiful face. The Lord remembered the conversation that the estate manager had started. The manager said that rumors from the church began to spread among the children. Without taking his blue eyes off the important documents, the brunette assumed that the guest thought he was some kind of disgusting monster. Jerome Hamilton explained that it was because the blonde was protecting the young master. The manager said that the baby was the only one who did this in public. The man explained that if the rumors were causing trouble for Kylek, he could take care of it. The Lord explained that there was no need to worry about such nonsense. The brunette asked to keep an eye on such incidents. Continuing to stroke the baby, Kalek could not understand how her thinking could be so different from the others. The brunette wanted to expect even more from the baby. The guy whispered that he sincerely wanted Angie to take pity on him. Emerald eyes snapped open. The girl asked if the person next to her was Lord Kalek. Covering the baby's view, the guy asked her not to open her eyes. Confused, Angie couldn't understand what was happening. Angie was surprised that the young master was not hiding behind the curtain. He said that it was better for the baby to go home. And he explained that he still had matters that needed attention. The blonde's lungs were filled with the delicate aroma of flowers. The blonde obeyed the master. Finally, Kalex said that he would like the guest to visit him three times a week. The young master explained that he would like to hear the stories she told much more often. A smile bloomed on Angie's face. The girl hesitantly asked if she really could come so often. The Lord promised to look forward to her arrival. The guy also smiled back. The sun played with gentle reflections on the blue seawater. On the plain that overlooked the sea, there was a small estate, which was looked after by Angie's parents. The girl often helped them with household chores, and sometimes came to get some fresh air. Freshly washed snow-white linen was filled with the delicate aroma of flowers. Gently touching the snow-white sheet and straightening it, the girl noticed that everything was fine. Due to the fact that the cottage was located next to the northern cliffs, in summer one could feel pleasantly cool on the plain. The blonde turned around slightly, and surprise and joy shone in her eyes. The girl noticed that the red roses had already bloomed. She gently touched their velvety petals. Angie was delighted by the beauty of the flowers. She remembered that the harvest was about to begin. At this time of year, the Blackwell family created a powder from Bengal roses, which the islanders mixed with water before drinking. After smelling the flowers, the girl noticed that their aroma was truly divine. She noticed that the roses had a pleasant, but not too rich aroma. Once again, drawing the delicate smell into her lungs, the girl remembered her master. She still couldn't believe that the young lord could say something like that. The more time the blonde spent at the Blackwell estate, the more she wanted to find out what kind of person the lord really was. The girl realized that the young master was unshakably strict, but at the same time he was warm, like the rays of the setting sun. Excitedly, she asked what food Kylek liked best. The guy coldly asked the narrator not to ask stupid questions and to continue the story. At times the blonde felt like he was drawing a line between them. The young master was delighted that the girl could turn any tragedy into comedy. Angie was sincerely happy every time she managed to make him laugh. The girl knew that at moments the brunette let his guard down, and she was very curious about the expression on the Lord's face when he looked at her. The blonde sincerely dreamed of one day seeing the man who was hiding behind the veil. Engine became wary when she heard a suspicious sound. The blonde looked around, 
realizing that she had definitely heard something. The girl was quite worried about rumors that supposedly local animals were mysteriously dying in the forest. Mom asked if the blonde had hung out the laundry. Looking up from her thoughts, the blonde assured that she was already on her way home. Her silhouette slowly moved away. The brunette looked after his friend with some sadness, smiling. The girl thanked the sir for giving her a lift. Angie explained with a bright smile that the weather was wonderful and she would walk the rest of the way. The little girl held a small bouquet of flowers in her hands. The coachman remarked that a walk in the garden was an excellent idea. The blonde was in anticipation of what the Lord would say about her bouquet. She couldn't wait to give the gift to him. It seemed to Angie that many years had passed since she first chose to follow this path. The girl enjoyed the gentle touch of warm rays and the sweet aroma of flowers that was present in the air. The blonde realized that autumn would soon come and time would take its course, leaving behind an endless number of traces. Small heels left marks that covered the entire ground. The girl confidently knocked on the luxurious gate. Louise greeted the blonde. In the turmoil of her life, Angie didn't even have time to realize that she had turned 18. Three years passed, and this time seemed both long and fleeting to the blonde. Angie's relationship with the Lord has undergone many changes. One day, when the girl was reading another interesting story, the Lord interrupted her and asked her to simply call him Kai. With a radiant smile, the girl agreed. With each of her visits, Kai became more and more close and cared for his dear guest. He said that dinner had already been prepared. The guy allowed her to eat in his room from time to time. The blonde realized that she really enjoyed the selection of gourmet teas. The girl admitted that she usually only drank pink. Looking at his prettier childhood friend, the brunette explained that he wanted to give her another reason to visit this place. Every day the connection between Angie and the guy grew stronger. The girl dreamed of looking at the young master just for a moment. Unlike the heroine from the legends, the blonde did not have the courage or recklessness to even glance at the guy. Sitting next to the young master, Angie drank hot tea in the hope of warming up. The brunette noticed that she had caught a cold again. He was not at all surprised, because this did not happen so rarely with Angie in the cold season. Laughing, the blonde explained that this time she was not so bad. The guy noticed that the girl said this last year. The Lord admitted that he did not like it at all. After a short pause, Kai asked if there was something that the blonde sincerely wanted. The girl asked him again in confusion, a little embarrassed. The brunette reminded that his girlfriend would soon have a birthday. The guy assured that he would like to give her a gift. Angie briefly remembered the luxurious gifts she had received over the years. The young girl was very confused, because he usually surprised her without even asking. Kai reminded that the girl would soon turn 18. The brunette claimed that he would like to give her something especially in honor of her coming of age. At times Angie felt like her friend was reading her mind, as if he was looking right into her shower. The blonde was very confused by this question, because she didn't know what exactly she wanted. The girl sincerely appreciated his gifts, and therefore did not even think about it. The blonde began to talk in an uncertain, trembling voice. A violent cough was heard from behind the tool. The girl immediately jumped up, alarmed. Blood oozed from the young master's mouth, and his lungs were compressed from lack of air. Without thinking for a second, the blonde ran towards him, trying to help. The young lord's snow-white shirt quickly became covered with scarlet drops. The guy barked at the guest to stay where she was and called the servants. Soon an excited Louise and several other workers ran into the room. The elderly woman grabbed the blonde tightly by the shoulders, not allowing her to move. Through the translucent fabric, one could see the silhouette of a guy exhausted by an attack. Angie, since the Lord gave her the right to make one wish, would like to cross the line that separated them. The girl dreamed of running up to him and embracing him in her tender, friendly embrace. A service was held in the church under the dim moonlight. The high priest read passages from the gospel to those present. The man said that if you firmly follow the word of the sermon and sincerely believe, then thanks to this there will be an opportunity to be saved. With a translucent scarf on her head, the blonde prayed. Angie was very worried whether the Lord was feeling any better. The girl understood that her cold could not compare with the pain that the young master was experiencing. This has happened many times already. But on this day, the girl was even more worried about his condition, because it was especially serious. The blonde hoped that her prayer would reach heaven. Angie left the temple, throwing on a warm cape with a hood. The girl heard someone's quiet conversations and listened a little warily. The blonde couldn't figure out who could be there at such a late hour. Approaching two unknown people, Angie realized that you were being told about something important. The girl reassured herself that she should not worry about it and that she needed to return home. The blonde realized that her mother and father would be worried about her. Approaching her house, the blonde said that she had already arrived. Mom asked the girl to come up. 
announcing that she had been sent a letter from the Blackwell house. Angie was surprised that the message was intended for her personally. The girl took the small envelope in her hands and realized that it was Kai's handwriting. Lord suggested that the friend was incredibly shocked by what happened that day. The guy assured that he would like to talk to her in person, but his current state did not allow him to do this. And because of this, he decided to send her a letter. The brunette recalled that he had previously said that he supposedly wanted to give the girl something special for her birthday. The guy asked to let him know what she wanted. Kai sincerely hoped that when he recovered and returned to his bedroom on the third floor, he would see her first. There was a sparkle of hope in Angie's green eyes. The blonde realized that if he continued to take care of her while he himself was suffering, she would not be able to help herself. Louise reported that the guy immediately required a blood transfusion for the medication. Calmly turning the page of the book, the young master said that he had no intention of doing this. The brunette strictly asked Louise not to force him to repeat it again. Standing firm, Kai explained that he would never harm the blonde. In a reply message, Angie assured that she did not have enough words to express how relieved she was to receive his letter. The girl admitted that she was very worried about the young master. The Lord, sitting on a bench in the garden of his castle, carefully read the letter. Small snow whirlwinds flew like flocks of butterflies. Angie admitted in a letter that she sincerely hoped that the brunette's treatment would go smoothly. She insisted that she didn't care how long it took. The blonde assured him that she would wait for the moment when she could greet him in the room again. Angie assured him that she did not need anything as a birthday present. The girl insisted that she had only one wish. The blonde assumed that this wish was possible, but she didn't know if he would want to do it. She shared that she really wanted to see his face. His blue eyes had faded and turned gray. Kai realized that his childhood friend had no idea what thoughts crossed his mind every time he saw her. The guy rejoiced with her when a sincere smile appeared on her face, which the other medicine did not have. The Lord was delighted that his guest spoke her mind without worrying about what others would think. Kai was delighted that the blonde was giving up the eternal life that others coveted. But instead, she accepted the value of mortal life. Every time the brunette saw his girlfriend, he caught himself thinking that he was struck by some kind of magical power. The young master was captivated by her pale, refined hands, golden hair and sparkling emerald eyes. She had no idea how hard he tried to control himself every time he saw her lovely lips. Kai didn't know if she would stay when his secrets were revealed. After cutting off a small piece of the pie, the girl suggested that strawberries from Mary's farm were added to the dessert. The blonde noticed that her mother always made great desserts. The woman explained that if her daughter could not overcome the cold, then she would feel a little better if she ate her favorite food. And she cut off a small piece of the pie, this dish. I brought her a small cup, and my mother asked the blonde to drink honey water. The woman explained that the drink was supposed to help her daughter cope with her cough. The blonde was sincerely sorry that she was sick every winter, and the medicine did not help one bit. The father joked that as soon as Angie gets better, she should drink rose tea. The woman recalled that the drink worked wonders, and because of this, all the islanders drank the drink like water. Mom remembered that she had heard that the blonde taught singing to children in church. The girl explained that Letitia asked her for help. With some admiration, she explained that the children were doing an excellent job, and their singing was like charming sparrows. Mom asked what song the children were learning. The blonde said that Letitia mostly prepares children's songs. The girl enthusiastically shared that her friend told her to prepare something of her own next time. Sighing dreamily, Angie explained that she hadn't even thought about which ones to choose yet. Looking at the window, the girl watched the sparkling snowflakes. Angie suggested that she could teach the kids songs about the sea or the night. The blonde began to hum a melody and asked if her mother had ever taught her such a song. The woman insisted that she had never heard such a melody and asked her husband. The man replied the same. The blonde asked if her daughter was sure that it was they who sang the song to her. A little confused, Angie explained that the song suddenly popped into her head. The girl could not understand where she had heard that song before. Smiling, mother asserted that it was already approaching night and it was time to get ready for bed. The woman reminded her that her daughter would turn 18 tomorrow morning. She said that she had prepared something special. Laughing, the blonde assured that she was eager to find out. Angie walked slowly up the creaky stairs and said goodnight to her mother. Having changed into a nightdress, the blonde blew out the candle. Covering herself with a warm blanket, she tried to remember who exactly sang this melody to her. In these thoughts, Angie, contentedly, quickly fell asleep. Before falling asleep, the blonde hummed the words from this song to herself. In her dream, the girl found herself on the plains while her silky hair was tossed by a gusty wind. A painfully familiar voice asked if she could hear him. A twinkle appeared in the emerald eyes. Angie could not understand who the stranger who was calling her could be. 
The guy asked again if she could hear him. The blonde begged the girl to say at least something. The guy asked if she was familiar with this song. The blonde asked to answer him if the girl knew this song. The dream quickly began to tear apart the reality that was in the girl's head. The previously beautiful landscape has now become very dark. Bright rays of the sun made their way into the girl's room. Emerald eyes opened. I accept the new day. Angie realized that the dream seemed too vivid and realistic. Tearing the blonde from her thoughts, her mother knocked on the door and asked if she had woken up. Rising from the soft bed, the girl answered positively. The woman asked her daughter to come downstairs and look at the many gifts. The blonde said that a gift from the Blackwells had also been delivered. The girl eagerly took the box with the dusty blue rose. The note said that the gift was intended for Angie, who loved winter and snow. The girl immediately realized that this gift was from Kai. The Lord wished his girlfriend a happy 18th birthday. The brunette said that he was very sorry that he could not congratulate her personally on this day. The guy said that the letter contained his sincere wishes. He wished his childhood friend that her days would be happy and that her joy would continue throughout the following days. The brunette explained that he was trying his best to recover and asked to wait another ten days. The Lord promised to give her a real gift. Kai informed that along with the letter, he sent a little thing called a snow globe. The guy explained that with the new thing, the girl would be able to admire the snowfall all year round, as if her birthday had never ended. Looking at the gift, the blonde was delighted with its beauty. The birthday girl felt as if she was looking at a scene from a fairy tale. The girl understood that her friend had sent her plenty of gifts. Angie sincerely hoped that by a real gift, the brunette meant that he would show her his face. The blonde was glad to hear that everything was fine with the Lord. Approaching her daughter, the woman admired the beauty of the gift. Mom asked if this was the first gift the Lord sent for her birthday. The blonde asked if the young Lord had opened up to her daughter. Since the girl was embarrassed about the gifts she received on previous birthdays, she did not tell her mother and father about those. Laughing, the woman said that her daughter and Kylek were born within one day of each other. A little confused, the blonde asked if her mother was sure of such a statement. She insisted that she didn't know. Supposedly, the young master's birthday was right after her holiday. A little confused, the woman claimed that she was not sure that she remembered it correctly. The blonde felt embarrassed, because no matter how much she asked, the woman did not tell her this. The girl could not believe that she had not known about this for three whole years. Lowering herself, the woman explained that it was not a big deal since Duke Blackwell and Lord Kaleck preferred to spend their birthdays quietly. Mom explained that this was an unspoken rule, since the Lord was against any form of extravagant celebrations. The woman asked to pretend that she had not heard about it on her next visit. Lowering her eyes, Angie insisted that the birthday was a special event. The blonde explained that she felt sad every time something like this happened. The girl asked what exactly Lord Kai was sick with. The blonde assured that her heart ached for him, while she knew that he could not enjoy even such simple joys of life. Angie assured that she was very worried about her friend and could not help herself. Mother warned her that she should not say this in front of strangers. The woman explained that the Blackwells were not an ordinary family like theirs. The blonde explained that the ruler's family was very different from theirs, and this meant that they carried a heavy burden on their shoulders. The woman explained that they were obliged to respect the wishes of the rulers. Mother insisted that if Angie really cared, then she should have prayed for the Lord. The girl said in her letter that she had a great time celebrating her birthday. The blonde said that the holiday was filled with heartfelt wishes from a huge number of people. The girl claimed that she received many gifts, the best of which was a snow globe which he gave her. Angie thanked the Lord for giving her eternal winter. The blonde explained that she wanted to say that she missed him a lot. The girl was looking forward to the end of his treatment, and they could see each other again. She admitted that she really wanted to see him in full health and finally see his smile. Angie hesitantly asked if she could make such a wish. Having finished her prayer, the girl asked to grant Kai a peaceful life and good health. The blonde was waiting for those four days to pass, and they could see each other again. Coming out of the temple, the girl heard someone talking. Angie, hiding, decided to eavesdrop on the conversation. The girl suggested going back and talking to Miss Dunce. A small voice said that this was against their teachings. Angie heard approaching steps and tried to understand what the strangers were talking about. Shivering from the cold, the blonde hoped that those people had already left. Looking up, the girl realized that she had seen this man in a black cape before. A small tremor ran through Angie's body as the stranger began to quickly approach her. The blonde grinned and said hello and suggested that they had already met before. Tearing the robe off his head, the blonde asked if the girl remembered him. The stranger's face was illuminated only by the dim light of the lantern he was holding in his hands. The blonde assumed that the girl had not seen him. A visibly nervous Angie explained that she had never seen the guy. 
The blonde explained that he came to the city to help his aunt, who was the caretaker of the church. Angie asked if the stranger's aunt was called Hester. The guy confirmed the blonde's guesses. Angie guessed that the woman she saw that night was the caretaker. The blonde remembered that her mother once told her that her older sister died of illness many years ago. The child, whom the woman raised alone, was born with a weak body and could hardly leave the house. The blonde remembered that that boy had albinism, and because of this he had purple eyes. This situation reminded the girl of the situation with Kai. The stranger asked if Angie had seen him. Hanging over the blonde, the albino asked to let him walk her home. The guy noticed that it was quite late, and the winter nights were very dark. Angie refused the offer, explaining that everything was in order, and assuring that she always walked this road. Quickly leaving, the blonde said goodbye to her new acquaintance. The guy realized that he didn't even have a chance to tell her his name. After prayer at church, Angie returned home and quickly fell asleep. In her dreams, the blonde found herself on the same field. The stranger quickly approached her, trying to call her. Angie became wary that the same guy appeared in her dream again. The girl assumed that she could not speak because she could not utter a sound. Recently, the still green clearing was engulfed in flames. The fire spread quickly. The blonde looked around, trying to figure out how to get out and where the fire came from. At parting, the stranger explained that they had met again and asked not to forget him. The blonde introduced himself as Martin Silva. Bloodthirsty flames consumed Martin, leaving only a mountain of ashes in his place. After a terrible dream, the girl's blue eyes were filled with fear and some sadness. Angie jumped out of bed and was breathing heavily. After listening, the girl realized that the scream was similar to the one she heard in her dream. The blonde put on a cape and took a lamp with her. She took tentative steps along untrodden paths. Due to the severe frost, the snow crunched under her feet. The wind howled terribly as if begging the blonde not to go. The girl walked with uncertain steps to the place where she thought the sound had entered. Something quickly slipped behind the blonde. Angie assumed that there was a wild animal next to her. Red eyes glittered in the darkness. Seeing the red furious eyes, the girl screamed and threw her lamp to the ground. Her hands shook violently when the girl realized that the creature was looking at her. Angie was trembling either from cold or from fear, feeling a huge shadow hanging over her. She was genuinely surprised to see a man in a shirt spattered with blood. Without ceasing to tremble, the blonde tried to slowly crawl away from the creepy stranger. Consciousness quickly left Angie's body and she collapsed unconscious. Having caught his friend in his arms, Kai realized that after this incident, he would not be able to give her the gift he had promised. The young lord carried his girlfriend in his arms. Light snow covered the massive branches of the pine trees. Looking around, the guy realized that his father had finally quenched his thirst. The brunette did not understand how his friend ended up in such a dangerous place. The guy whispered that the whole island and forest were unsafe. Kai asked the blonde to hold out a little longer. The Lord gently kissed her forehead and assured her that he would not be strong enough to protect her. The guy swore that he would destroy the curse with his own hands. The rays of the morning sun flooded the girl's house. Angie asked if mother was in the kitchen. Smiling, the woman wished her daughter good morning and assured that she was already going to wake up the blonde. Angie was asking how she got home last night. Confused, the woman asked what her daughter meant. The girl asked if her parents noticed that she went out last night. Having placed freshly brewed tea on the table, the woman claimed that she did not understand what her daughter was talking about. The blonde insisted that she and her husband did not hear their daughter leave last night. The woman explained that the only thing she heard was that strange cry that her daughter was talking about. Mom assured that if she really went into the forest, her shoes would be covered in mud. The woman asked her daughter to look at the shoes because they were perfectly clean. The blonde explained that the front door was locked. Mom claimed that when she entered Angie's room, she was usually sleeping soundly in her bed. The woman assumed that her daughter was just having another nightmare, and so she asked her to throw stupid thoughts out of her head and start breakfast. The girl realized that her mother's words could not be true, because everything that was happening did not look like a dream. Angie was sure that she saw someone in the forest with her own eyes. The blonde remembered that the guy was very handsome, but his presence was so difficult to believe. The girl tried to convince herself that she clearly remembered what she actually dreamed. She remembered that in her dream, there was a man who stood in a green meadow and shouted his name. Angie said the name of the stranger she saw in her dream. The woman asked what her daughter had just said. Confused, the blonde replied that it was nothing important. The girl understood that if she told her mother about her dreams, they would think something even stranger about her. The blonde decided to check everything on her own a little later and find out whether Martin Silva really exists. The woman asked her daughter to eat some fruit. Mom carefully asked if her daughter should drink rose tea since she felt much better. 
Smiling, Angie assured that she would prefer tea with honey. The girl shared that she planned to drink a drink of roses when she fully recovered. The blonde said that she heard that the Lord's condition was gradually improving. A glimmer of hope lit up in the daughter's eyes. The woman claimed that the development of a new drug was nearing completion. After these words, Angie felt relieved. The blonde assumed that her prayers had reached heaven. She dreamed of being able to talk to Kai again as quickly as possible. Angie realized that even if she only heard his voice, it would bring her bliss. At sunset, the girl again visited the church and prayed for the young Lord Blackwell. Angie sat in the carriage looking at the night scenery outside the window. A small lamp stood next to her. The girl and the coachman approached the house. The girl's father asked what kind of spring cleaning was going on. The visitor said that usually at this time they thoroughly cleaned the estate. He assured that at the moment, several maids were sick with the flu and therefore they urgently needed new people. The girl saw a note in the man's hands. The girl's father agreed, but he warned that Angie had a cold. Taking the note in her hands, the girl read in it that Kai would like to give her a real birthday present. The young master explained that Zachary would turn to his friend for help with spring cleaning. The guy invited Angie to meet in the evening in the general life gardens. The coachman asked if the lady could go to the estate. The blonde was clutching a small piece of paper in her hands with anticipation. Angie assured that she would be happy to help with the cleaning. In the carriage, the girl felt the number of lies continue to grow, like a snowball. The girl realized that this was the only way to see Kai. Soon the blonde stood at the entrance of the greenhouse, which was known as the sanctuary of the heads of the Blackwell family. The greenhouse was built with love by Blackwell for his wife. Angie looked forward to meeting the Lord in the very center of the sanctuary. The guy stood in a luxurious cloak, looking at the night sky. The blonde realized that it was him she had seen last night in that ill-fated forest. The young master greeted his friend. Trying to contain her emotions, the girl covered her face, realizing that she knew this voice very well. In a trembling voice, the girl asked if it was her Kai. Smiling, the young lord explained that it was he. Our heroine asked if he was the same man whom she came across in the forest. The young master assumed that his girlfriend lost consciousness from shock at that moment. Kai explained that he took her home and assumed that she remembered everything. The very confused blonde said that her mother assured her that it was just a dream. Angie was surprised because she saw that there were no signs that she had gone outside. The Lord said that he covered up all traces of her escape because he didn't want her parents to worry again. The brunette said that he wiped away traces of snow on the girl's shoes and hung her cape in the same place. With excitement, the blonde asked what he was doing in the forest at night. The girl said that she went there because she heard a strange noise. Angie assumed that the friend was there because of the same noise too. Kai claimed that he was also awakened by a strange scream. The guy reassured his friend that it turned out that there was something wrong with the windmills and the sound came from the sea. Kai noticed that it was very strange that no one went to check it out except her. The blonde began to doubt that the noise really came from the windmills. The girl was sure that the scream belonged to a person. Seeing his friend's confusion, the brunette asked if she liked the gift. Angie carefully examined every feature of his face. The blonde tried many times to imagine the guy, but she failed because she couldn't think of anything other than what other people were saying. Even in her wildest fantasies, Angie could not imagine such graceful features. The guy asked if his girlfriend would mind him coming closer to her. The brunette explained that she could push him away at any moment if she felt completely uncomfortable. Kai gently touched her hand. The young master promised to always respect the girl's wishes. But as soon as the guy approached, Angie's heart began to pound and her cheeks turned very red. After an awkward silence, they kissed passionately while the scent of fresh flowers filled the air. The blonde felt like her heart would burst out of her chest in a moment. The girl felt his sweet breath on her neck. After the long-awaited meeting, Angie was overwhelmed by a wave of ecstasy and a fog appeared in her mind. The blonde was aware that this was definitely not a dream, but she still couldn't believe that she had kissed Kai. Seeing his friend's confusion, the Lord asked if everything was all right with her. Removing her hand, the blonde explained that not everything was okay with her. Slowly stepping back, the young master asked if he had done something she did not want. There was a slight blush on Angie's cheeks. She said that she would like this too. The blonde explained that they were from completely different worlds. Kai assured that there was no need to worry too much about this. The guy assured that Angie herself knew how precious she was to him. Kneeling down, the brunette gently kissed her hand. In the basements of the same castle, furious screams were heard that echoed through the gloomy corridors. The man claimed that the boy was dearer to him than anyone else. The brown-haired man allegedly wanted his son to live the rest of his life in good health and completely unharmed. The man angrily broke the mirror that stood in his room. The brown-haired man's shirt quickly became covered with blood, which flowed from his mouth. 
The head of the Blackwell family explained to his faithful servant that this was his only desire. Tightly clutching the blood-covered napkin, the master explained that the servant could use any means, be it new drugs, witchcraft, or medicine. The ruler argued that Jerome must save his son at any cost. The trembling light of the torch cast eerie shadows on the floor and walls. The guy was sure that Angie knew better than anyone how precious she was to him. Kai assured that if she did not feel the same as him, then it was not her fault. The blonde, tightly grabbing his hand, claimed that she felt the same and had been waiting for this moment for many years. The girl admitted that she prayed every night. I can imagine the moment when they will stand face to face. The blonde assured that she hoped that the day would come when she would finally be able to speak to him looking him in the eyes. With a slightly darker expression, Angie explained that she took into account her humble origins and was unsure whether they should become even closer. Lord assured that his late mother was the daughter of a piano teacher. Angie was a little taken aback by this answer. Despite many years of communication, the blonde did not know about this. For a long time, the girl assumed that Evgenia was from a family equal in status to the Blackwell house. Do not get up from your knees. The young man assured that he was trying to convey to his friend the fact that his aristocratic origins would not become an obstacle to their relationship. Kai said that he just wanted to hear an answer that would come from the very heart of his friend. The blonde realized that she couldn't forget what her heart wanted. Unfortunately, she could not forget what her heart desired. Strong heartbeats echoed in the blonde's ears. Angie felt her entire body pulsate. Taking the Lord's hands, the blonde admitted that she felt the same. She insisted that she felt that she wanted to be brave just this once. The Lord hugged his girlfriend tightly, gently whispering her name. Watching what was happening, no escaped the blonde's lips. Suddenly jumping out of bed, the guy realized that he had again seen that girl with blonde hair, who had often appeared in his dreams lately. Martin finally found out the name of the guy who was next to the stranger in his dreams. The guy realized that his dreams were very strange. The blonde found it very strange that a girl he had never seen before kept appearing. Markin was surprised by the events taking place on Cullinan Island. There were stacks of various papers carelessly scattered in the blonde's room. Martin still couldn't understand what he needed to do. After all, he couldn't even be sure that everything he saw in his dreams was real in reality. Strange dreams literally drove the guy crazy. Martin put on his slippers, trying to convince himself that the dreams were just a coincidence. Looking at himself in the mirror, the blonde suggested that this could be his fate, which should not be ignored. Angie, sitting behind a book, recalled the events of the previous evening. Much to our regret, the young master said that he needed some treatment for some time. Yesterday, the guy shared that the development of a new drug was still carried out by trial and error. He explained that most likely they would not be able to see each other. Seeing the excitement on his friend's face, the brunette asked if everything was okay with her. Sitting at the table, the girl dreamed that the Lord would get better quickly. Angie unconsciously said these words out loud, and embarrassed, hoped that no one heard her. The blonde reassured herself that he said that his treatment would not last that long. She realized that she had to be patient until then, and there was no need to worry about it. Thinking about it, she decided that it would still remain a mystery to her. The blonde understood that you couldn't find the birthday registry in the book. The girl was reassured by the fact that the stranger from her dreams was simply a figment of her imagination. Angie remembered that until recently, she had never had the feeling that her dreams were connected. Before she checked all the books, she was sure that the blonde was the inhabitants of this island. The blonde created that she should dig deeper. She was sure that the guy's name should be in the register of island residents. Angie asked again whether there was not a single similar name in the registry. The worker reported that there was no one with even a remotely similar name. The man invited the blonde to take a look for herself and handed her one of the many books. Brown said that it contained the names of everyone who had ever lived on the island over the past 20 years. The blonde wondered if someone she had never seen could appear in her dreams. Angie realized that she didn't even know if this person actually existed. The girl assumed that the image that appeared in her dreams was some kind of ghost. The blonde wondered if there were those who ended up badly trying to escape the island. Angie clarified that she meant people like Elliot, who tried to sail a boat past windmills. The man thought for a few moments and explained that he did not remember such cases. He suggested that the girl look at the death register. Entering the library, the girl asked if Angie was still there. The blonde greeted Michael and invited her friend to go. Letitia reminded them that they must come together to weave the hyper-roll lace. After daydreaming a little, the blonde realized that her friend was right. Angie was determined to look at the death register another time. The girl hoped to see the stranger again in her dreams and receive additional clues. Looking at her friend, Letitia noticed that something had changed in her. Green eyes darted from side to side trying to come up with an excuse. 
Letitia noticed that the girl looked more beautiful than ever. The blonde asked what Angie's secret was. Grabbing her friend by the shoulders, she asked if she was dating someone without telling her a word. The blonde remembered the absurd proposal, and her cheeks quickly began to turn red. The girl with red hair waved her hand and offered to go with them to the sewing room. Angie asked if there should be another person with them. Confused, the girls asked who her friend meant. The blonde claimed, and was allegedly sure that there was another participant in the embroidery circle. The blonde described the girl she remembered well. Laughing, one of her friends insisted that the blonde was just imagining things. The girl suggested that Angie confused her with one of the heroes of her books, but our heroine was completely sure that she probably wove lace with them. Friends joked that the girl heard some strange sound a few months ago. The maid carefully watched the girls and listened to their conversation. Coming around the corner, the woman greeted them. Mrs. Jerez asked if everyone was there. The woman ordered everyone to go home. A little confused, one of the friends asked what was wrong. Several people in black robes were trying to enter the temple as quickly as possible. In a disappointed voice, the woman said that Duke Blackwell had died. The guy walked with moderate steps along the long corridors. A faithful servant stood by the covered body of the deceased. Kai confidently walked towards the dead man. Kneeling down next to the corpse, the brunette noticed that it was strange. The guy couldn't believe that his father finally closed his eyes. Throughout his life, the Lord discovered that his father had never been alive. The guy stood next to a corpse covered with a snow-white cloth. On the chest of the late ruler lay a blue rose. The guy suggested that this is exactly how his late mother seemed to his father. Kai realized that Eugenia was the cure, and the only original sin, the only one a man had ever loved. The guy was deeply struck by the thought that after the death of his mother, his father succumbed to madness and began to accept any blood transfusion that was available. The Lord was very sorry that the man met such a miserable end. The brunette was worried about what his fate would be. The guy began to doubt that he could break the curse and regain his own life. A torrential downpour began on the island, covering the trees in icy robes. Having learned the news, the blonde realized that she had hoped that the ruler would live longer. The blonde couldn't believe that the duke had left this world. The girl heard about the deterioration of the ruler's condition, but did not expect that he would pass away so suddenly. Angie would really like to know if Kai is okay. She was sincerely worried that he was trying to cope with his overwhelming grief on his own. Knocking on the door, my mother asked if she could go into the room. Turning around sharply, the girl answered positively. Angie asked where her father was. The woman explained that he had left to help with preparations for the funeral. Mom explained that in fact, she was told that the blonde would need the help. The girl asked again in surprise. Mom assured that it would take several days for everything to return to normal, but for now the rulers wanted the blonde to help with household chores, like last time. Angie smiled and explained that she would sincerely be happy about this. The girl's heart beat wildly in her chest and gave her hope of seeing Kai again. The woman explained that her daughter should not worry about anything. After all, despite the fact that Mr. Edward was no longer with them, they would have a new duke, Kylick Blackwell. Mom explained that, as always, they would continue to live aspiringly all day long under the auspices of the Blackwell house. With excitement, the blonde asked if everything would really be okay. Angie recalled that the Lord was undergoing treatment, and they did not know whether he would ever be cured. The woman reassured her daughter that if the patron's condition did not improve, the guy would have to look for help outside the island. Angie was very confused because it was forbidden to leave the island, because there were a lot of sharks around the small island. She remembered that there were still traces of poisonous gases on the mainland. The mother agreed that the baby's words made sense. The woman explained that she had to listen to what they were going to tell her. The blonde said that she didn't know the details, but two or three times a year a school of sharks would migrate, and the full moon would deviate from its normal course and turn red. The woman shared that during the blood moon, there was an opportunity to cross the sea by boat. Knowing this, the late duke sent an expedition to the mainland in search of a cure eight years ago. Edward lost his servants during a terrible storm. Less than a week after the events, he was forced to return back. Because of the tragedy, the brunette never told anyone about the crossing. If the ruler had spoken about this, people might have made dangerous attempts to leave the island. The woman explained that if you didn't know the lunar cycle, the unfortunate people could die like Elliot. Thoughtful, the girl asked if this meant that the mainland was a safe place. Angie noticed that this was markedly different from what her parents led her to believe. Hesitating a little, the woman argued that her daughter's judgment was not correct. Mom explained that the Duke was desperate, so he left to get medicine. The blonde asked her daughter not to fill her head with stupid thoughts. The woman asked Angie not to tell anyone about this. The very nervous girl explained that she still had one more question. The blonde asked when this lunar cycle would be next. 
Mama insisted that she didn't know for sure. The woman assumed that only servants who had served in the Blackwell household for a long time were aware of such things. Trying to avoid the conversation, the blonde reminded her that it was time for her daughter to pack her things, since she needed to go to the Blackwell's house immediately after the funeral. While packing her things, Angie noticed that it had never even occurred to her that she had a chance to leave this island. Thoughts began to come to the blonde's mind that this was indeed a possibility. Standing in the rain, the people bowed their heads saying goodbye to their ruler. People prayed for their master to rest in peace. A torrential downpour dripped onto the luxurious tombstone. The blonde stood and watched the funeral procession. There were no tears on Angie's face. The mother asked her daughter to stand in the same place. The woman went to say her final goodbyes to the gentleman. The blonde suggested that most likely Kai would not come. Angie remembered that the guy had never shown himself in public before. Looking to the side at the silhouette under the umbrella, the blonde suggested that it could be a new gentleman. The girl called him by name, but he only put his finger to his lips as if asking him to be silent. The stranger opened her face and smiled at her old friend. The guy noticed that they had not seen each other for a long time. Angie noticed that the blonde looked completely different than when she met him near the church. The girl was surprised that for a moment he reminded her of Kai. The guy noticed that the girl was much less surprised than he had expected. The albino wanted to take her by surprise by knowing her name. The guy explained that he had heard a lot about her as a kind resident of Cullinan Island, with an incredible talent for embroidery and a love of tea. A little confused, the girl asked to call her simply Angie. Drops slowly flowed from the edges of the umbrella. The guy introduced himself as Michael Randall. Smiling, the albino explained that he sincerely hoped that she would simply call him Michael instead of addressing him by the name of Young Master Blackwell. The morning after the funeral was wonderfully beautiful. Small drops fell from the luxurious leaves of the trees that grew in the huge garden. There was mourning in the ruler's house. The blonde went out for a few minutes to get some fresh air. Michael asked what the girl was doing in this place. A little confused, Angie explained that she had gone out to get some fresh air. The blonde noticed that the atmosphere inside the house was quite heavy. The girl said she allegedly heard that a new acquaintance had been suffering from some kind of illness for a long time. A subtle smile appeared on Michael's face because he was sure that the girl was not at all interested in him. The blonde began to get very nervous. The guy said that he had recently recovered and began to go out into the world. The albino admitted that at times, the air he breathed felt unreal, like the fact of the Duke's death, which was also difficult to believe. Angie explained that she sincerely believed that the guy would no longer have to suffer. The girl explained that she knew that he had been in pain for a long time and could only sincerely wish that from now on, he would be happy. Michael thanked for the wish. The albino said that from that day on, he would help on the estate. The blonde admitted that he was very pleased to see the girl next to him. The guy asked if she would help bring him up to date. Angie explained that she hardly knew more about the responsibilities than he did. The blonde assumed that she was much more capable than him. The girl felt a little ashamed that she had previously mistook him for Kai, and only now she saw that he was radically different from her friend. Angie noticed that it was the gentleman who was akin to the dark chess piece, while Mike embodied the ivory color of the piece. The albino asked if the girl wanted to take a walk with him. She smiled and responded positively. Walking up the long steps, Angie tripped and began to fall rapidly. We don't waste a moment. The guy grabbed her hand, not letting her fall. Look into her emerald eyes, he asked if everything was okay with her. Embarrassed, the girl thanked Michael. The guy seemed to be feeling the girl with his amethyst eyes. The blonde asked where she got the strange marks on her arm. Angie was surprised by such a question and looked at her hand. The girl suggested that she might have gotten hurt somewhere. Taking a closer look, Michael noticed that the marks on the arm looked like needle marks. He admitted that he also had many similar marks. The albino raised his sleeve as proof. Angie was surprised that the scars on his arm looked exactly like hers. The very nervous blonde remembered that she had never had an injection before. She could not understand where such traces came from. Sitting down next to the girl, Michael asked if she would mind him taking a closer look at the scars. Hesitating a bit, the blonde agreed. Kai watched his friend with some excitement. The young master asked how long she would stay in the castle. Jerome said that the blonde will be with the guy for about ten days. An unkind sparkle flashed in his blue eyes. The young master began the sentence, but then assured that it was nothing important. The brunette realized that it would take him some time to adapt. The guy gently combed his silky hair back with his hand. Kai realized that the future was fraught with a great many changes. Bare tree branches hung over the Blackwell's luxurious estates. The stars were barely visible from behind the dark clouds, giving a dim light. The brown-haired woman told about her friend that they were given instructions to tidy up the library or do some sewing. 
The girl asked if she wanted to go to breakfast together. While they were cleaning up the mansion, the girls became good friends. It was Annette, a servant in the Blackwell house. Smiling, Angie explained that she would gladly accept such an offer. Anna wished her friend good night and hoped with hope that they would see each other in the morning. Sighing heavily, Angie lay down on the luxurious bed. The blonde did not expect that a whole room would be allocated for her. The girl realized that she would not see Kai that day. Angie remembered that a friend sent her a note promising to try to come. Sweetly stretching, the girl noticed that this day had been very long. At first she sent the man to rest, and then she met someone. The blonde couldn't stop wondering where the strange marks on her arm came from. Angie realized that the scars were most likely from injections, but she didn't remember anything. The blonde got up from the soft bed and decided that as soon as she was home, she would ask her mother about the tracks. Angie blew out the candle and lay down on the luxurious bed. The girl was glad that her cold was almost gone. The blonde suggested that from tomorrow she will be able to drink her favorite rose tea again. The heavy eyelids quickly closed, plunging the girl into sweet dreams. She stood in that clearing again and heard the blonde calling her. Turning around, our heroine realized that Martin had appeared in her dream again. The guy called her by name, but the blonde didn't remember whether she told him her name. Martin begged her to answer if she could hear him. The blonde asked if the girl lived on Cullinan Island. Unfortunately, the blonde still couldn't say anything and simply watched the stranger. Martin said that the roses that grew on the island contained a drug. The guy beamed not drinking pink tea. He assured that if Angie did as he said, she could gradually regain her memories. The blonde asked the girl to try to remember who she was before she got to the island. Martin assured that the blonde should remember who she really was. In her sleep, the girl begged not to leave and to stay a little longer. Angie woke up to someone touching her arm. Opening her eyes, the girl saw her friend next to her bed. Kai carefully asked if she had just had a nightmare. Lord claimed that Angie broke out in a cold sweat. Seeing the gentleman, a slight blush appeared on the blonde's face. The girl said his name tenderly. Getting out of bed, the blonde asked when he came into the room. The brunette asked for forgiveness for entering her without an invitation. The guy assured that he did not expect her to sleep at such an early time. Kai said that he sent her a note, but he had a lot to take care of, and so he wanted to stop by for a while to see her. The Lord asked if he had scared his friend. Angie realized that she shouldn't have talked about the strange dreams. The girl was sincerely surprised by what she saw in her dream a moment ago. The blonde remembered that Martin told her about the drugs in the pink tea. Angie couldn't sit idly by and decided to get to the bottom of this. The girl said that when she woke up you saw him. The blonde apologized for the room being so dark and asked to let her turn on the light. The brunette looked down and explained that everything was fine and that it would soon be time for him to leave. Kai promised to stay a little longer. The blonde asked if he was okay as she was worried about him. The girl assumed that he was tired both physically and mentally. Kai remembered how his girlfriend communicated with that guy. Pushing the veil of memories away from his eyes, Kai claimed that everything was fine with him. The Lord assured that it could not be otherwise, because he had a person who cared so much about him. Gently pushing her hair away from her face, the brunette promised that when his treatment was completed, he would like to talk to her about something. Kai assured that he would like to talk seriously about the future. Sunlight flooded the luxurious estate. On the branches of small fir trees, one could see snow sparkling under the bright rays. A small rose stood in a vase by the window, enjoying the beautiful day. Angie decided to pour herself a small mug of tea. The girl could not understand why Kai was such a good kisser. The blonde realized that she had completely lost track of time and guessed how good the young master was at other things. Confused even more, she realized what she was thinking about. The girl understood that in any case, she was glad that the brunette's treatment was successful. The blonde was very curious about what he wanted to discuss with her. Angie thought about their future, and her heart began to beat wildly in her chest, but only one thought came to the girl. She took a mug of tea and spilled some on her hands. Angie dropped her mug of hot tea and suddenly remembered yesterday's dream. The blonde decided to listen and suspected that pink tea could really be what the stranger said in his dream. Angie wondered if Martin had been appearing in her dreams frequently, around the same time she started drinking tea with honey for her cold. The girl began to suspect that this was not just a coincidence. The blonde doubted whether to trust the stranger without any visible evidence. Angie decided that it probably wouldn't hurt if she stopped drinking this suspicious tea. Someone persistently knocked on the door and asked the girl if she was ready. Turning around sharply, the blonde replied that she was already on her way. The pink tea remained on the table. For several days in a row, Angie poured pink tea into the garden. At first, the girl was very nervous because she was deceiving everyone. Over time, she stopped worrying. 
The blonde wanted to be brave, thinking it would help reveal the truth. She sincerely believed that at the end of the long wait, the long wait would be justified, and then the memories would finally be restored. Over time, Angie remembered a tall, red-haired girl whose name was Lucy. The girl remembered that they had actually embroidered together before. The blonde realized that the other girls didn't believe her when she started talking about the missing girl, as if she had slipped out of her memory. Angie realized that someone seemed to have erased all traces of Lucy's existence. The blonde was riding in a carriage. She was very nervous, as if someone could read her thoughts. Soon the carriage returned Angie home and quickly left. Smiling, the woman said that she was sincerely glad to see her daughter return. The blonde asked her daughter to come through and suggested that she was very tired from all the hard work in the mansion. Mom asked why the girl was so pale. The woman noticed that the blonde looked exhausted and had darker circles under her eyes. The blonde noticed that even the girl's hair began to fall out rapidly. Angie admitted that something strange had been happening to her lately. The girl said that a man appeared in her dreams and always said the same thing. Angie insisted that he allegedly claimed that she should leave the island. Animal fear appeared in the woman's emerald eyes, and she asked what her daughter had said. The blonde said that initially she thought it was just a dream. Engen shared that over time she began to have the feeling that the stranger was telling the truth. The blonde shared her guess that they didn't know much about what was really going on around them. Angie suggested that they did not know about the survivors of the terrible bloody war, who lived off the island, or about the current state of the mainland, which could become safe. The woman, looking gloomy, insisted that she would not do that, and promised to take her daughter to the doctor first thing tomorrow morning. A little confused, the blonde asked why she needed to go to the doctor. Moving away from Angie's mother, she begged her not to do this and insisted that she was not sick. The girl explained that she just wanted to talk about her strange dream. Mom asked me to throw absurd thoughts out of my head. The woman suggested that because of the science fiction books, it was difficult for the blonde to distinguish reality from fiction. The blonde suggested that her daughter should stop reading and concentrate on embroidery. The woman asked if her daughter understood exactly. A silent question appeared in the heroine's emerald eyes. The moonlight dimly illuminated the girl's room. Her mother hovered over the sleeping blonde and took out a small bottle of amethyst liquid. Without hesitation, the woman poured the contents of the vial into the water. The blonde promised that they would continue to live happily on the island, and it would always be that way. The woman was sure that surrendering herself to fate was the only key to happiness. Jerome asked if the gentleman could sit down. The guy rolled up his sleeve, and there were a lot of puncture marks on his arm. Dam was rejoicing that it was finally all over. The servant asked how the duke felt. Placing his feet on the floor, the young master admitted that he felt fine, except for the fact that he was slightly dizzy. Jerome said he was glad to hear such news. The faithful servant admitted that he doubted that the treatment would be effective. Walking down the long corridor, Kai explained that no one knew when the attack of madness might happen again. Approaching the window, the guy looked at the night scenery. The brunette assumed that for now these possibilities were enough for them. The guy said that he would soon invite Angie to the estate to tell him the wonderful news. The woman noticed under the crackling fireplace that this was impossible. Louise claimed that the dreams were nothing more than fantasy. The woman took a sip of pink tea from her mug. She insisted that the man Angie saw was just a figment of her imagination. The visibly nervous blonde asked if the man was a fugitive. The maid said that everyone who tried to escape from the island was caught and received appropriate punishment. Louise said that some were lost at sea, but the refugees had no chance of survival. The maid explained that if Angie started drinking pink tea again, then this should not happen again in the future. With a gloomy expression, Louise asked if the cold was the only reason Angie stopped drinking rose tea. The woman asked if the girl's parents were sure that she had no other intention. Lowering her eyes, she explained that tea with honey helped overcome the disease and promised to be more careful in the future. Louise promised to give the family a little more sedation. The woman reminded that you just need to add a little to the water. Louise guaranteed that the blonde would sleep soundly all night and not dream. The blonde thanked Louise for her help. Tightly clutching a small bag of sedatives, the man asked if their daughter would be okay. The parents were very pleased to hear that Lord Kylick had taken Angie off the medication list before starting his treatment. The servants hesitated for a few moments. Miss Hertz explained that everything was like that and no one could convince the young master. The woman asked if their daughter would definitely be safe. She recalled that their daughter's blood was a perfect match for the Lord. The woman asked whether the ruler would have to look for another medicine. The maid noticed that the couple had become very attached to Angie over the years. Louise asked if they had begun to consider themselves the girl's real parents. Lowering her eyes, the woman admitted that the girl became truly dear to her during the time she spent with her.
The blonde explained that in this world, she had never met anyone as sunny and modest as Angie. Rising from her chair, the maid said that in answer to their question, she explained that there was no reason for concern. Mrs. Hertz said that the gentleman wanted Angie to do well. The maid reassured her that if the girl had memory problems again, they could move on to the next stage. The woman explained that she supposedly wanted to say that they would deceive the girl using amnesia. The loud sound of wheels could be heard through the streets. Many people communicated with each other without knowing what was really happening. Having opened the door, the guy told Martin that his father had already arrived. Wilhelm was smoking a pipe and reading a newspaper. The blonde noticed that a lot of time had passed since their last meeting. Without taking the pipe out of his mouth, the man asked his son to sit down. William asked if he understood correctly that the guy needed a merchant ship to go to the island. The blonde explained that he only needed the ship for cover. Martin said that despite the fact that a lot of time had passed, he remembered that the island was not that far away. The blonde said that any boat that could withstand a week's journey would be enough for him. The father said that it would not be the slightest difficulty for him to get a boat. The man asked if everything would be all right with Martin. Taking his hand, Martin asked his father not to worry. The guy explained that until he lands on the island, nothing dangerous will happen. Nodding, the man confirmed, allegedly believing that this is how it will all be. Wilhelm asked if his son was sure that he could find the girl he saw in his dreams. The green eyes dimmed noticeably, and the guy stated that he couldn't be sure, but would like to make sure for himself. Martin explained that there should be no new victims. The father noticed that he had not seen such a look from his son for a long time. The guy recalled that he also became a victim when he was kidnapped and taken to the island against his will. The blonde assumed that countless other children had experienced the same thing, just like his daughter. The man asked if his son realized what he was saying. Wilhelm explained that the guy accused Duke Blackwell of taking children to the island against their will. The man could not believe that the memories of the abducted were manipulated, making people dependent on the drug, which was grown there on the island. Wilhelm asked his son not to talk nonsense. The man explained that he was still grateful that he saved his daughter. The father recalled that Bryn simply got lost and wandered around when she attracted the attention of some petty criminals. The man explained that the House of Blackpell was a subsidiary line of the royal family of Trirestra, and their family was the most powerful on the continent. He insisted that he had no negative feelings towards them. Although the man may have been the richest man on the continent, the man recalled that his own wealth paled in comparison with that of that family. Waving his hand, the father asked where Martin got such strange ideas in his head. The man ordered the blonde to stop talking about this topic. Patting the guy on the shoulder, the brunette argued that if he saved his daughter, then he should reward him generously. Martin explained that the villains were targeting orphans who would not be found if they disappeared. He claimed that the unfortunate children were sent to the island as sacrifices. Martin asked if the man remembered everything correctly. The blonde recalled that the man's daughter was covered in dirt, disheveled when she was found in the pouring rain. Martin suggested that those who did not know the girl could confuse her with an orphan. The guy assured that he did not need a reward, but simply asked that the man use the money for the benefit of the country's children. The blonde hoped that the children would not be so vulnerable and that they would not be dragged off to that terrible island. Covering her eyes with the brim of her hat, the woman assumed that the blonde's words were true. Wilhelm asked why the Blackwell family would create such a strange secret organization. The rich man explained that if they needed land to grow the drug, an estate on the mainland would be a much safer option. The father explained that if the Blackwells needed labor, they could hire much stronger people than children. The brown-haired man asked if his words were true. Martin asked if he had ever heard of a dark ritual called eternity. The rich man asked what the guy meant. The blonde explained that about ten years ago, the Blackwell house began to practice forbidden rituals. Martin insisted that the only thing he knew was that the ritual required the flesh and blood of children. The blonde insisted that magic made it possible to get something that people should never have wanted. The island was flooded with bright sunlight. Small yellow flowers stretched towards the sun while the glare of sunbeams played on the luxurious lawn. Taking the embroidered napkin in his hands, the blonde was delighted with its beauty. Mike noted that this was a truly incredible gift. Laughing, Angie claimed that she wanted to repay the people she felt indebted to during her time at the estate. The girl admitted that she regretted that she could not finish the decorations earlier. The blonde asked if Michael liked the gift. Smiling, the guy noticed that that napkin was simply wonderful. The albino suggested that the blonde gave the gift not only for him. The guy insisted that he couldn't even hope that when he first asked to meet, he would be given a gift. Angie noticed that the blonde actually looked disappointed. Before this, the blonde had no idea who Michael was. Smiling, the guy noticed that his name was not written quite correctly. 
The girl was surprised because she was sure that it was on a napkin that it was written correctly. The guy explained that his name was pronounced the same, but spelled a little differently. Angie insisted that she did not know this, and promised to make a new napkin. Smiling, the blonde explained that everything was fine, and he was happy that the girl knew the correct spelling. Holding the gift in his hand, the albino smiled radiantly. The sun illuminated his hair, giving it a purple tint. A small leaf fell into a pond. Mike asked if the girl had finished her work at the mansion. The guy explained that, apparently, he would have to stay in these places. The blonde insisted that it seemed to her that there was nothing left that she could do. The girl remembered that since her mother forbade her to read for some reason, Martin stopped appearing in her dreams. Angie was sure she wouldn't drink rose tea again, because there might be things she didn't know about. The blonde was looking forward to inheriting Mr. Kalek. Louise said that most likely the ceremony will take place within a few months, since the guy's treatment has been completed. A man in a black robe asked whether the ruler would go to the mainland. The maid explained that the young master must have an audience with his majesty. The woman claimed that she had everything under control, and warned that she needed to find a new cure for Kalek. The maid realized that she should prepare for any unforeseen circumstances. The woman realized that Angie Risdell's blood was the most suitable. But there was nothing they could do, given how adamant the master was in this matter. The woman offered to find a child, which would suit them at this stage of treatment. Mom asked if Angie was sleeping. After her husband's affirmative answer, the blonde admitted that it seemed wrong to her that they drugged the girl. The man sternly replied that she should not allow her resolve to weaken. The blonde clarified that Louise said they had no reason to worry. The man reminded them that they just needed to convince them that they didn't need Angie for the next stage. Breathing heavily, the woman asked if her husband had noticed this. The blonde noticed that their daughter occupied a special place in Mr. Kalek's heart, not as a companion or maid. The woman asked if her husband had seen how many gifts he had sent during the day. The blonde said Mr. Kalik said he thanked the girl for her hard work, but she had not heard him send anything similar to anyone else. Mom asked if her husband saw the expression on their adopted daughter's face. The woman explained that the blonde was smiling and was delighted that her embroidery was used to sew this dress. The blonde agreed that his wife was right, but there was little they could do. The man assumed that it was just a fleeting youthful love. The blonde assured that the gentleman should understand this better than anyone else. The father said that given the heavy burden she had on his shoulders, he was sure that he would not make a reckless decision. Lying quietly in bed and opening her emerald eyes, Angie couldn't believe her ears. The girl noticed that as soon as she came home, she unusually quickly fell asleep after drinking water. Initially, the blonde wanted to believe that it was a side effect due to her not drinking rose tea. Angie found a note that was hidden in the box with the dress. That day she felt that she should not drink the water that her mother brought her. The guy said in the note that his treatment had come to an end and asked his girlfriend to come to him in the evening in this dress. The brunette explained to the girl that Jerome would be waiting for her at the entrance to the forest. Angie pretended to be asleep and quickly ran away from the house. Everything swam before the blonde's eyes. She couldn't understand why her mother gave her the drug. The girl suggested that the reason for this could be what she told her about Martin. The blonde had a theory that her mother was afraid that her relationship with Kai might develop into something more serious. The whole picture before the girl's eyes was blurred, and her breathing was heavy. Angie wanted to figure out what the woman added to her water and what they had in mind for the next step. It was very difficult for the girl to think straight, because there were too many things she didn't know about. The blonde was sure that everything that was hidden from her was just the tip of the iceberg. Someone addressed the girl by name, causing her to flinch sharply. Jerome asked if the blonde was running towards the edge of the forest. The man asked if she had enough time. The faithful servant noticed that the girl was very pale and asked if she wanted to catch her breath a little. The blonde said that she would like to see the Lord immediately. The girl tightly clutched the hem of her snow-white dress. Angie realized that at least for a moment she wanted to find herself in his arms, leaving all her worries behind. The night breeze blew through her silky hair. The girl stood near a huge gloomy building. She knocked on the door hesitantly and touched it to open it. Kai quickly opened the door and addressed his lover by name. The brunette was surprised that she came. His hand slid around her delicate, thin fingers. Angie was very glad that everything was fine with the brunette. The girl noticed that her lover looked even better than before. With trembling hands, Angie asked whether he was completely cured or not. The girl sincerely hoped that the brunette would no longer suffer. Lord confirmed that he was fine. With a deft movement of his hand, Kai threw the hat off her head. The headdress slid through the air and landed softly on the greenhouse floor. Gently stroking her cheek, the Lord noticed that this dress suited her style very well. The brunette said that the little thing was made specifically for him. He wondered if the girl recognized this marigold embroidery. 
Angie responded positively, claiming that she did the embroidery herself. She said that when she was embroidering marigolds in the mansion, she could not even imagine that the needlework would become part of a chic dress. Holding his beloved tightly to himself, the Lord explained that he would like to give her something meaningful. Lowering her eyes, the blonde thanked him. The brunette admitted that only she allowed him to call himself by his abbreviated name. The girl relaxed her vigilance and began to suspect that he did not know about what was happening. Angie assumed that he didn't understand what people were thinking. The blonde assumed that her lover did not notice the secrets that this creepy island hid. The blonde explained that she was not sure that she could accept such a generous gift. Approaching her face, the guy assured that she deserved even more. Kai admitted that he waited for many years for his treatment to be completed to say this. The Lord asked for the honor of holding the blonde in his arms. The things of our heroes were lying on the floor. Angie kissed her lover passionately, looking into his sky-blue eyes. He gently began to untie her corset. The brunette reminded her that she should not be afraid, since there was always the possibility of pushing him away at any time. Kai whispered that he wanted to share this moment with her. The blonde realized that now she felt the same way and longed to touch him. The girl realized that she had more pressing issues to think about. She was unable to hold back and just wanted to feel the warmth of his body. The guy gently kissed her hand and explained that she would never guess how long he had been waiting for this moment. After that night, they lost themselves in each other again and again, but wanting more. The brunette felt that it was impossible to stop. He was seduced by the smell of her body and the warm breath that he felt on his neck. The brunette loomed over her with his muscular body. The more the lovers got to know each other, the stronger their passion became. During a passionate night, drops of love sweat dripped from their faces. On restless nights, they closed each other's eyes and ears, drowning in the abyss of ecstasy. Michael stood at the door, from where uncontrollable moans were heard. The blonde silhouette was illuminated only by dim stars. The guy tightly clutched in his hand the napkin that the girl gave him. Angie went out into the garden and noticed that the night air was simply amazing. The brunette asked if she was sure that she didn't want to walk through the garden in his arms. Smiling, Kai noticed that she looked rather tired. The blonde blushed and insisted that she was fine. The Lord asked if she was sure of her words. Angie answered positively without hesitation, but in reality she was completely exhausted. The blonde felt as if he had become even more cunning than before. Kai put his hands on her shoulders, making her perk up. The brunette suggested taking a leisurely walk, explaining that he wanted to show her something. The guy gently took a strand of her silky hair and sniffed it. Angie happily accepted the offer. The girl walked hesitantly through the garden admiring a small firefly. She noticed with admiration that the number of insects was increasing. The brunette asked what she thought about the view from which the floor of the island and the horizon of the sea could be seen. Small insects hovered in the air, creating the feeling of endlessly falling stars. Angie admitted that she had never seen such a mesmerizing landscape before. The Lord shared that his father allegedly said that he and his mother came here when they were not yet married. The brunette gently pressed his cheek to the girl's cheek. The smell of love was in the air. Kai admitted that the blonde was the first person he brought to this wonderful place. He asked if she remembered his words, that he was going to say something special after his treatment was over. He tenderly said her name, causing her emerald eyes to sparkle with some kind of sparkle. Like a breath of wind that disturbed the silence of the forest cover, a sudden thought appeared in her mind. For a few moments, the girl forgot about secrets and the feeling of awkwardness. Until this moment, no one took her seriously. Kai admitted that he sincerely hoped that his beloved would believe him and not question his words. The guy said that he sometimes watched her from this place. The brunette assured, allegedly heard her, that on those days when she did not come to see him, but helped her parents in that house. The guy nodded at the lonely cottage, which was surrounded by the sea breeze. Angie realized that this was their house on the northern coast, and she did not know that it was visible from the Blackwell estate. Kai insisted that at that moment his feelings began to grow, but then he began to doubt and assume that this had happened much earlier. The brunette said that when he looked at her beautiful face, he felt truly alive. The guy said that in those moments he wanted to share his joy with her. The Lord became gloomy and asked if she would go to the mainland with him. Sweat began to flow down the blonde's cheeks in cold drops. Angie hesitantly asked what he meant. The girl asked how they could get to the mainland. The brunette explained that he knew that the blonde had always been told that there was still poisonous gas left there. Kai explained that this was a lie, and that on the mainland many people were building a new life. The brunette reminded that his inheritance ceremony would take place soon, and having received the title, he intends to settle in the capital. The guy admitted that he wanted to tell her so many things, but had to wait until the end of the treatment. 
After kissing her hand, the Lord explained that now he could gradually tell the girl about everything that he had neglected until then. The guy promised that from now on, he would do everything right. Kai sincerely hoped that his beloved would remain by his side after everything. Leather boots confidently stepped onto new shores, leaving wet footprints. The waves beat mercilessly against the expedition's shoes. There was a cough. The brown-haired man couldn't believe that they had reached their destination. The man took confident steps towards new shores. Bursting into the workshop, the brown-haired woman asked if the girls had heard the news. Smiling, one of the girls noticed that the ship had arrived at their shore. Emma was surprised that her friends already knew about this. The girl explained that apparently, the captain of the ship was meeting with the Lord. One of the sailors said that the situation truly turned out miraculously. The man shared that they were caught in a storm and ended up on his lordship's island, the place they were looking for. Wilhelm said that the surrounding waters were considered impassable due to thick fog. The brown-haired man suggested that this was most likely why the island remained safe. The man suggested that this was divine providence. Anna was delighted to say that the lands outside the island were safe. The girls still had a hard time believing it. The brown-haired woman explained that they needed to monitor the situation for several more years. The girls skillfully embroidered golden roses on her lace. The girls were delighted that the situation itself was amazing, because they thought that they were stuck on the island forever. Angie remembered that just last night, this was a pipe dream. The girl noticed that the coincidence was very strange, as if it was fate. The blonde realized that the recent news had clarified a lot of things, and it turned out that everything Martin said was true. Angie realized that her boyfriend really existed somewhere off the island again. The girl realized that most likely what the blonde said about pink tea was not a lie. Angie realized that she no longer saw Martin in her dreams due to the effects of the new drug. With every moment, the girl wanted to know more and more. The blonde didn't just want an answer, but to help Kai in any way she could. She was sure that because the young master had been ill for so long, he most likely did not know much about what was happening on his island. Angie noticed that her friend was completely shaking and pale. The girl asked if everything was all right with her. Letitia asked if the blonde had met Lord Kylik before. Our heroine asked what she meant. Lowering her sky-blue eyes, the girl assumed that her friend had no reason for this. This could hardly have happened. Angie cried nervously. I don't understand why her friend suddenly mentioned the Lord. The blonde realized that she could not ask why she had made such an assumption. She realized that she had never seen a girl so scared. Smiling, she explained that if Letitia ever needed her help, she could tell her so that it wouldn't happen. The girl gratefully laid her head on Angie's shoulder. She claimed that her friend was the person she valued most in this world. The blonde couldn't understand why she didn't understand this earlier. Because at that moment, she made a huge mistake. Events moved to the Blackwell house. The young lord told the servant that sometimes he caught everything in his thoughts, that he imagined his mother's gaze looking at his father through the tongues of raging flames when she found out about everything. Kai could not forget the words that she shouted at him. The guy remembered his mother's snow-white face, as if there wasn't a drop of blood left in her body. The lord knew that his father loved a woman, but unfortunately he realized it too late. Kai supposed that was why he was determined not to do anything he might regret later. The brunette recalled that Jerome served his father faithfully. The guy explained that he would not hold it against him if he decided to leave him. The young master warned that if Jerome stayed by his side, he would suffer the consequences. And he asked if he understood him. Bowing, the servant explained that he respected the wishes of the guy and his father, and was therefore completely devoted to the family. Overhearing the conversation, Louise realized that this would not work. The woman knew that if things continued like this, it could become a huge problem. The maid, with complete determination, began to act first. With quiet steps, she approached the blonde man, who was waiting for her in the depths of the gloomy corridors. Events are moved forward two weeks. The guests were surprised by the beauty and magnificent views of the celebration. The brunette suggested that Angie go quickly. The blonde was glad that Kai's inheritance ceremony had finally been officially announced. The girl remembered that according to tradition, the young master must go to the mainland with the sailors to receive the title. Angie knew that before their ruler sailed away, there would be a three-day ball for the inhabitants of Cullinan Island. To the blonde's surprise, the people were not afraid of the mainland. The inhabitants were intrigued by ideas about the unknown world. There was anticipation in the air of opportunities to see the face of the future duke, which had been kept secret for many years. Angie assumed that people had, until then, tried to suppress their curiosity about Kai and the mainland. The girl realized that this was exactly what was expected of them. Most likely, Kai was not feeling any better all this time. Jerome approached the girl with confident steps. The blonde was surprised to see her lover's humble servant. The man asked if she could come with him for a minute. 
Angie assumed that Kai wanted to see her and agreed to go with the man. The blonde told her friends that she would be back soon. The girls were going to watch the festival from the same place where they were standing. Angie walked with confident steps behind her old acquaintance. Harold stood next to his daughter. The man asked if she was ready. The father reminded her that she should not make mistakes of any kind and reminded that the future of their family lay on the girl's shoulders. Louise greeted the guests with a forced smile. The woman said she had been waiting for Mr. Duran for a long time. Smiling, Harold asked if they would immediately go to the Lord. The maid said that they would just discuss a few things. The man followed Louise, leaving the blonde alone. The father asked why Letitia froze like an idiot and ordered her to follow him. There was fear in her sea breeze colored eyes, but the girl followed her father with uncertain steps. Passing by the luxurious fountains, Jerome asked the guest to follow him. Soon they reached the greenhouse. With a radiant smile, Kai greeted his beloved. The guy reassured Angie that no one would enter this part of the garden. The brunette hugged her tightly and assured her that he missed her very much. Despite what happened last night, after the hug, the girl's heart jumped out of her chest. The blonde asked if he was sure that he had time to meet with her. Smiling, Kai said that nothing was required of him except his presence. The gloomy girl said that she thought a lot about what he said to her on the cliff when fireflies were circling around them. The blonde explained that she was a little afraid, but still she was overcome by the thought that long before he spoke about the mainland, she met Martin in her dreams. Angie explained that when she learned that there was someone interested in things outside the island, she may have already foreseen this moment when she would enter the new world. The first emotion she experienced was delight. Angie dreamed of going to the mainland with Kai, if fate gave her such a chance. She took his hand and pressed it to her cheek, assuring him that she wanted to go to the mainland with him. The guy admitted that his heart was heavy that the girl would have to leave her parents and friends. The Lord asked not to worry and promised after a while to make sure that those she loved could also settle in the capital. With sparkling eyes, the blonde asked if this was true. Kai assumed that it was his turn now and took out a small box from the inside pocket of his jacket. Looking at the decoration with admiration, Angie asked what this decoration was. Brunet said that the sacred tear was a jewel that was passed down in his family from generation to generation through the female line. Kai said that his father gave the jewelry to his mother, and now he wanted to give it to his girlfriend. He carefully pinned the sky-blue stone onto his beloved's dress. A visibly nervous Angie explained that she wasn't sure she could accept her prized gift. The Lord asked who else he could give the jewelry to, if not his beloved. Kai admitted that he was originally going to give her a necklace and a ring, but according to tradition, they would have to exchange rings when they said their vows. Covering her mouth with her hands in delight, the girl asked if he was sure of his intentions. Angie recalled that she had nothing to offer. The blonde recalled that he was a sideline of the imperial family. Jerome interrupted the girl's words, reminding the gentleman that it was time to go out. The brunette insisted that he had completely lost track of time. Kai handed his beloved a small envelope and asked her to read the contents. The guy said that the note contained everything he wanted to say and all the answers she wanted. Kissing the girl on the forehead, the brunette promised to contact her soon. Kai explained that they would need to start preparing to leave the island. Even some time after the meeting, the blonde's heart was beating at a breakneck speed, echoing in her ears. Angie noticed that whenever she was around Kai, she felt as if she was floating in the clouds. The girl looked at the beauty of the night sky, dreaming about the future. Someone called out to her from behind and was actively running towards the girl. Turning around, she noticed Michael. The albino said that she should immediately go with him. A little confused, the girl asked what happened. With ragged breathing and a pounding heart, the blonde reported that the girl's friend was in trouble. Angie ran actively when she saw her friend kneeling on the ground. The blonde's face was covered with her hands. The girl called her friend's name and asked if she was okay. There was horror and panic in the blue eyes. Angie explained that she was confident that she would be able to attend the banquet. The blonde extended her hand to her friend to help her get up. The girl recalled that Letizia claimed that she would not be able to attend this banquet. Moving away from her friend, Letitia asked why she lied to her. Letitia recalled that she asked her friend if she had met Lord Kylik before. Lowering her head, the blonde asked if her friend had come to the garden to meet the Lord. Letitia sighed heavily and explained that her friend didn't know how badly she wanted to run away. The girl assured that when she followed her father, she strongly doubted whether it was worth it. The girl trembled all over and realized that she did not want to meet the guy. After all, they said that his face was ugly, like a monster. Trembling all over, the blonde asked if it was too late to change her mind. Turning around, the blonde asked why the hell she was saying such nonsense. Louise explained that the girl's friend volunteered to take on the role. Surprise and fear were visible in the blue eyes. 
Letitia asked what the Lord was really like. Darkening, the blonde assumed that her friend would not answer her after so many years of keeping everything a secret. With tears in her eyes, Letizia ordered her friend to move away from her and insisted that she did not want to see her. Rising from the ground, the blonde ordered Angie to get out. A letter from the Lord accidentally fell to the ground while the girl tried to get up. Putting his hand on the girl's shoulder, Michael suggested that they should go for a walk. The blonde explained that her friend would take care of Letitia and there was no reason to worry. With some disappointment, Angie looked at her friend who continued to sob on her knees. Michael hit a small sky blue envelope. Mom asked if Angie was any better. The caring woman wet a rag and placed it on her daughter's forehead. The woman suggested that the temperature would not subside anytime soon. Mom asked how she could get sick in the middle of summer. Angie was concerned that after the banquet, she tried to see her friend many times, but each time she refused to start a conversation. The girl saw that in fact, she had isolated herself from everyone. Unfortunately, the blonde lost the letter that Kai then gave her. Entering the room, the father asked how his daughter Angie was feeling. The blonde explained that the girl was feeling a little better, but still needed supervision. The man held out a small package. He explained that there were medicines from Dr. Johnson there. The blonde reported that animal corpses were again being found near the forest. The blonde asked if this happened near the northern coast. The woman recalled that several months had passed since the last such incident. The man asked if his wife had heard the news about Letitia. The husband said that the girl's engagement to Lord Kylek would soon take place. Jumping out of bed, the blonde asked what it all meant. Angie's hands were shaking violently and she asked again about this news. The girl could not believe the news of the engagement after what happened during those couple of special nights. In a trembling voice, Angie asked her father if what he said was true. The blonde asked whether the Blackwell House officially announced this. She asked if the Lord knew about this. Angie's consciousness began to rapidly cloud over. Soon the blonde collapsed on the bed. Her father quickly picked her up. Until this moment, the girl was sure that they had to go forward hand in hand. Angie couldn't understand when everything went wrong. The guy was heading to his grandmother's house. Catherine sat in a comfortable chair and could not believe her eyes. Waving his hand, Martin announced that they had arrived. The guy gently kissed the woman on the cheek and asked how she had been all these many years. The guy admitted that he still felt strange when she called him by that name. The grandmother explained that Philip was the guy's name and asked what was strange about that. Laughing, the blonde explained that for many years he had no idea about this name. The brunette bowed and greeted the old woman. The girl said that her name was Bryn and asked if she remembered her. After thinking a little, Catherine explained that she knew a girl with that name who was the daughter of the store owner. Smiling, Martin explained to her grandmother that the girl was his bride. The guy recalled that he brought the girl to their house several times. The blonde realized that his grandmother's memory problems had become even worse. Martin gently took the woman's hands and promised to visit her more often. Catherine assured that she would be very glad to see their sweet faces more often. The blonde explained that he had come to help his grandmother with the housework. He asked how he could help. At times it seemed unreal to Martin that he could enjoy such ordinary days. More than nine years ago, the blonde man risked his life and escaped from the cursed island. For a long time, the blonde led a wandering lifestyle and was with Bryn. At that moment, Martin instinctively felt the need to save her. Fortunately for the guy, the island was just a nightmare past that was left behind. And now they were able to start a new life. With Wilhelm's help, he managed to find his long-lost grandmother. The guy learned that all this time he should have been called Philip. The blonde's attention was drawn to a photo of people standing on the table. The guy realized that the photograph was the only one that survived, since the others were burned during the war. The woman said that Bryn and the guy's sisters had a very similar aura. With horror in his eyes, Martin asked if he had a sister. The woman wondered if he really didn't know. The blonde admitted that he still hasn't fully regained his memories. Feeling awkward, Catherine explained that she did not know this. The woman assured that the guy had a twin sister. The grandmother said that the baby was a beautiful and cheerful girl, with the same eyes as his. Marigold flowers quickly opened under the bright rays of the sun, standing cut in a vase. The woman said the girl's name was Amber. Catherine said they loved to sing a song from their hometown. Grandmother sang part of the melody in words. The melody seeped into the guy's head, and he began to remember his mother and sister. One day the little girl boasted that she was finally able to remember all the words. Patting Amber on the head, the blonde noticed that she was great at singing, and the guy promised to teach her a different song next time. The girl laughed and reminded him that he could not take back his words. Looking at the photo again, the blonde realized that the girl from his dreams was his sister. The guy was stroking a photograph of a baby that was covered in flame stains. 
The blonde realized that it was Angie. Bryn asked if everything was okay with him. Martin explained that he had just remembered everything. He clutched the photo frame to his chest. Events moved to the garden of the Blackwell estate. The blonde asked if she wanted him to continue waiting. Michael asked how long he should wait. The guy suggested that perhaps everything would get better on the island soon. Louise sternly noted that he still had not gotten rid of this habit. Visibly nervous, the albino asked not to change the topic. Michael recalled that all these years he did not show himself and pretended to be sick until Duke Blackwell died. The guy asked if the time had come to reveal the whole truth. The woman said that they had plans for Lord Kylock's betrothal. Miss Jerez said orders may be issued. The maid explained that the guy just needs to wait for the right moment. Angie walked out of the church, throwing on a bluish cape. The guy decided to approach first. The blonde asked the woman to tell the rest next time. The maid warned that the guy's rash actions could lead to serious trouble. Soon Michael was next to the blonde. The guy explained that he had heard that she had been sick for some time. The blonde said she wasn't sure because she didn't have a fever, but she still felt weak. Looking down, Angie realized that since that ill-fated night she had not heard anything about Letitia. It was painful for the girl to realize that her friend had suddenly moved away from her for some unknown reason. The blonde still couldn't believe the news. Angie asked how this was possible. She still remembered every word Kyle said to her. The girl understood that the jewelry that he gave her, and every promise that he gave her turned out to be a lie. The blonde sincerely wanted to believe that there were circumstances beyond the guy's control. Unfortunately, Angie found it difficult to convince even herself of this. The girl's body was completely trembling, and tears were welling up in her eyes. Michael gently removed his hood and looked into her emerald eyes. The guy promised that if he were in Kaya's place, he would never leave her. The albino assured that he would look into her eyes and share his warmth when she needed it. Surprised, the blonde asked what Michael meant by this. The blonde explained that he could brighten up her loneliness. The guy's silhouette loomed over Angie. The girl couldn't believe that he wanted to say that he liked her. Approaching the blonde, Kai angrily asked who he thought he was to say such things. The Lord looked at his opponent with contempt. The young master noted that it was very funny that the blonde considered himself a worthy replacement. The brunette barked that this was his first and last warning. Kai argued that he shouldn't have even gotten close to Angie. Unable to restrain himself, Michael asked if Angie knew how dangerous the brunette was. The blonde recalled that the Lord had been misleading the innocent young girl all the time. Kai asked how he dared say such a thing. Angie stood between the two guys and asked them to stop. The girl asked what would happen if someone saw Kai like this. The blonde reminded that the Lord had yet to officially appear before the inhabitants of the island. Breathing heavily, the brunette lifted the girl and asked her to walk with him. Finally, she exchanged glances with Michael. The blonde asked for forgiveness and followed Kai. In parting, the blonde wished the girl a safe journey. The brunette asked why Angie didn't come to their meeting place. Kai said that he waited for her every night. The girl hesitantly asked about their place. The brunette asked if she had read the letter that he then gave to her. Lowering her eyes, the girl admitted that she had lost the letter the same night she received it. He assumed that there was a misunderstanding and asked for clarification. Angie asked how she could change the fact that the brunette was going to get engaged to Letiza. Fear flashed in Kai's blue eyes. The girl asked if the rumors were true. Tightly gripping the hem of her dress, the girl couldn't believe that it was really like that. Everything began to clear in Angie's head. The blonde was aware that from the place and time of the engagement ceremony to all the subsequent plans, it seemed that everyone except her was happy. This situation made the girl feel as if the time they spent together meant nothing. After the girl recovered from the shock a little, she promised to return that brooch. Angie explained that it would be more correct if the family heirloom went to the future duchess. The Lord asked what his beloved was talking about. He recalled that that brooch belonged to a girl. The brunette insisted that he did not love Letitia Durand. Kai recalled that he wrote that this was just a marriage of convenience. The Lord said that recently many eyes had been directed at them, and they needed to go to the capital. Pulling her hand back, Angie asked if he wanted her to become his mistress while she worked as a maid in his capital mansion. Kai asked not to say such things, and promised that such a thing would never happen. The guy promised to make sure that the blonde has her own home. Kai promised that she would not have to interact with anyone else from the Blackwell house, and no one would be able to lay a finger on her. The guy wanted to tell the reason why he had to get engaged. The girl burst into tears and insisted that if she had known about this earlier, she would never have contacted him. Angie claimed that if she had known this in advance, she would have done everything possible not to fall in love. And if she hadn't succeeded, she would never have shown her sincere feelings. Rising from the soft chair of the carriage, the girl announced that it was time for her to go. Knocking on the carriage door, Jerome turned to his young master. 
Hanging over the girl, Kai said that he could not let her leave. The guy explained that they still had a lot to discuss. The fog again appeared before the girl's eyes, and she quickly began to fall. Entering the carriage, the faithful servant asked for forgiveness and was taken aback by this situation. Kai asked if anyone had seen their crew. The guy said that they were returning to the mansion immediately. The blonde said that they should take the chance when the fog clears a little. Martin asked what they had to do. The elderly man asked if the guy was planning to just find the island and get closer to it. The blonde admitted that this was his goal at the moment. The captain warned that they could have problems due to the storm, but he could not miss this opportunity. The man suggested setting sail before the storm began, then anchoring off a rocky island nearby and searching for the island as soon as the fog cleared. The captain warned that everything would depend on whether the fasteners could survive the terrible storms. With confidence in his eyes, Martin said that this would not be a problem for him. The guy was determined to find his sister. The blonde stood up abruptly, her heart pounding. Angie had hoped that he would look for her. Looking around, the girl could not understand where she was. Sitting on a chair, the brunette asked his friend if she had woken up. Kai explained that this was the best thing he could do for her. The guy said that many people were watching her and wishing her harm. The Lord explained that in his estate, Angie was safe and could relax. Firmly pressing the edge of the blanket to her chest, Angie begged to let her go home. The blonde asked if it would be enough for him to avoid communicating with her. The girl said that the people who were hunting for her wanted to prevent her from becoming a hindrance to him. Angie said that she would not change her mind, no matter what he said. The blonde said that she was staying on the island and would live her current life with her parents. Angie reminded that the guy should have gone to the capital and taken up his duties. Kai's face turned pale, and tears were about to well up in his eyes. The brunette said that it was already too late from the moment they confessed their feelings to each other. Leaving the room, the guy asked his beloved not to leave him. The door slammed shut, leaving Angie in silence and darkness. Arriving at the girl's parents, Mike asked if she had gone to help with the addition of the Blackwell house. The woman asked how the guy couldn't know the news. The blonde said that last night the blonde was called urgently because the Lord needed help. After all, he was preparing for an engagement. The woman said that she heard this from Jerome after the fact. Michael thanked the girl's mother and suggested that he would have to find the blonde himself. Heavy drops of rain slowly flowed down the barred windows. The rain made the situation in the girl's room even more gloomy. Angie sat on her luxurious bed, her head buried in her knees. The blonde did not know how many days she had been in this damned place. Kai came to her every night and silently watched. The guy's look said that he wanted an answer that she could never give him. Angie tried to cry and scream in anger, but in the end it was all useless. One of these days the blonde will try to end everything. But Kai stopped her. The girl broke the glass and grabbed a shard of glass. For some time the Lord sat with his head buried in her shoulder. Angie had the feeling that he was silently crying. Taking her by the bloody hand, the guy said that his mother became a sacrificial lamb for the curse that his grandfather created. The curse was so terrible that it was impossible to even imagine. The man considered this discovery a miracle. Witness the true nature of the curse, Edward decided to keep it a secret from his wife. The blonde one day found the archives and asked whether what was written in the documents was true. To his regret, the Duke realized that he could not hide his dark secrets from her for long. With tears in her eyes, Evgenia asked how he could do such terrible things. Running out of the room in horror, the woman asked not to come near her and broke the lamp. Evgenia said that she would never forgive him, even after death. The woman accepted her fate and burned alive in the flames. A heartbreaking scream filled the Blackwell estate with horror. The guy said that his father lived the rest of his days regretting everything, and he himself grew up aware of the severity of this burden. Kai explained that he didn't want to feel the same regret. The brunette explained that he would not let the salvation that Angie gave him go to waste. The blonde's face was swollen after long hysterics. The Lord ordered the maid to prepare food that was easy to swallow, like warm water and milk. Mrs. Hertz asked why the guy brought the blonde to the estate. The young master said that if he had not done this, someone would have tried to harm his beloved. Smiling, Louise asked who would dare to do such a thing. The Lord explained that there was a possibility that it was a fanatic who believed in the Kylum and was eager to obtain the cure, or one of the servants who considered Angie a nuisance. The brunette promised to leave the island as soon as the storm subsided, and he completed his engagement plans. The guy said that he had only one condition. Kai asked to destroy every single ampoule with amnosiac. The woman wanted to object, but Kai warned that if she disobeyed the order, there would be no further negotiations. Louise asked why that girl had to be there. The brunette recalled that when they managed to find a suitable medicine, Angie was chosen to take this place after much deliberation. Kai assumed that the woman knew the reason for this better than anyone else. 
The guy recalled that she said that this time, with the vitality that Angie possesses, it is worth striving for change. The young master assumed that the woman was sure that he would like the blonde. Sitting in her room, the blonde unsuccessfully tried to free herself from the handcuffs. Angie felt very sick because she had not eaten anything for a long time. The foggy consciousness quickly covered the girl's eyes with a white veil. The blonde vomited directly on the bed. Angie tried to remember the last time she had her period. The girl's thoughts were interrupted by a persistent knock on the door. The blonde realized that if they brought her food, they would simply leave the beds with her. A familiar voice asked if Angie was in this room. Bursting into the room without knocking, the guy looked at her with horror. The girl's body began to be covered in cold sweat. She asked how Michael knew she was in this room. The savior said that Anna reported to him that the blonde was locked in this room. Sitting down next to her, the blonde asked if the Lord had the keys to the shackles. The girl said that the key was on the table. Michael said that the brunette was at the pier because there were problems with the ship that was being sent to the mainland. With a slight movement of his hand, the albino freed the girl from the handcuffs. There was sadness in the green eyes. Footsteps were heard in the corridor. Taking Angie by the hands, the guy said that they had little time and offered to leave this damned place. The albino suggested discussing everything much later. The girl asked if he wanted her to leave this place. Michael explained that he would help only with her consent. Angie realized that she wanted to leave and tentatively took the guy's hands. Holding the girl by the hand, the blonde ran along the corridor, directing her to the exit. Michael ignored the puddles and continued running into the garden. The girl suggested that it was better for the blonde to return to the estate. Angie assured that she could handle the rest on her own. The blonde explained that if she went straight to get to the cliff, the northern coast would be directly below her. Angie was sure that as soon as she came to her parents, you would be safe. The guy offered to take her to a safe place. The blonde said that he had a day off. The savior noticed that the girl could barely stand on her feet. Heavy raindrops fell on the snow-white dress, making it cold and uncomfortable. Angie suggested that Michael could accompany her to the north coast. The girl sincerely thanked the blonde. The guy explained that he had to tell her something when they got there. When the couple arrived in a safe place and sat down near a cozy fireplace, the albino offered to go and get some warm tea. The fireplace cast eerie shadows on the walls. Angie asked if he was sure that he should not return. The guy asked her not to worry, explaining that everyone was busy with problems with the ship. The savior asked how long the girl had been locked in that room. Lowering her eyes, Angie claimed that she was not sure how long she spent in that damned room and assumed that it was no more than five days. The albino assumed it had started that night. The girl said that Kai wanted her to go with him to the capital. Angie admitted that she refused such an offer and ended up in the Blackwell house. The savior asked what the girl planned to do next. Michael explained that the young master would not stop so easily. Angie said that she was going to tell her parents about everything when they came to this house. The blonde was sure that despite the fact that the island belonged to the Lord and all the people worked for the Blackwell house, the girl assumed that if her parents wanted her to stay at home, the brunette would not be able to do anything about it. Angie believed that the Lord would not dare to disturb the peace of the village. The Savior warned that the island and its inhabitants were not as peaceful and innocent as she believed. Michael said that the rulers made this place look like paradise. The blonde looked at him in surprise and asked what he meant. The Savior said that all the strange things that had happened until then were associated with the Black Mass. The blonde asked if she knew that the Blackwell House had gathered all the survivors of the war. The guy said that everything was planned from the very beginning and that those people were monsters who were cursed. The girl repeated Michael's words with some disbelief. Angie asked what he was talking about. The savior said that he listened to the conversation between Mrs. Dunce and his closest assistant. The guy shared that the woman called ordinary people medicine. The rest were assistants who worked for the Blackwell house. Michael said that he wanted to tell the girl the whole truth. The savior assured that the girl should believe his story. The rain drummed tirelessly on the roof of the house, leaving streaks on the glass. The blonde hesitantly asked if the ritual called eternity had been carried out since the reign of the previous duke. The girl asked whether the medicine should be sacrificed in this ritual. Having given a positive answer, Michael said that the medicine was called that because it was used as a treatment in a black ritual. The guy said he allegedly heard that this was done to achieve immortality and eternal life. It was quite difficult for Angie to believe this story, but she remembered her parents' conversation. The girl realized that everything was beginning to make even more sense. Angie asked what the name of the drug that was in the rose tea was. The victim suggested that long-term consumption of tea led to gradual memory loss. Michael suggested that the drug had no effect on the adults who worked as assistants, and he assumed that they had developed resistance to the amnesiatic. Angie asked how exactly the drugs were sacrificed. 
Drops of cold sweat ran down the blonde's face. The girl asked if everything was all right with her friends, who repeatedly went to church services and embroidered. The albino asked if the girl really believed this. The guy rolled up his sleeve and asked the girl to look at the consequences. Horror and misunderstanding flashed through the green eyes. The blonde recalled that he told her that the traces were through his illness, but they were in the same position from the very beginning. The guy explained that because of the amnestic, they had no memories of it. Gently touching his wounded hand, Angie remembered that several of her friends had disappeared. The blonde asked what would happen to the missing people as soon as they outlived their usefulness as medicine. Looking down, Michael admitted that he didn't know about it. The guy suggested that the medicine could be evicted from the island after they completely lost their memory. The blonde confessed to the belief that the people of House Blackwell knew how to leave the island. Michael theorized that the rulers prevented people from leaving in order to keep the island completely isolated. With horror in her eyes, the blonde asked if Elliot was killed by monstrous fish and sharks. The guy explained that this was a lie invented by the Blackwell house. The savior said that someone was watching the windmills. Michael shared that the man killed Elliot before mutilating his body. With horror in her eyes, Angie was sure that the rulers could not do something so terrible. Placing his hand on her shoulder, the savior explained that people were disgusting and cruel. The albino explained that they had only one choice, they must go to the capital together. The guy said that this could be the only opportunity to escape. Michael was sure that this was their last chance. Angie wanted to say in a trembling voice that if they sent there, the Lord would be in danger. The girl lowered her eyes, realizing that Kai should have known about everything that was happening from the very beginning. The blonde's hands tightly clutched the hem of her dress. The guy asked if she was okay. Michael suggested that the girl set conditions that she would leave only if her parents accompanied her. The guy gently stroked her silky hair and reminded her that once in the capital, she could look for an opportunity and go somewhere far away. The blonde assured that the girl could escape to anywhere in the world. With a little confusion, Angie asked when the ship would set off on its long voyage. The albino said that it was planned that he would sail as soon as the storm passed, but most likely it will be delayed for a few more days. The guy said that Angie should prepare and try to convince her parents. The albino explained that if the blonde said that this was an order, then they would probably agree. Angie said that she intends to keep their dialogue a secret. The girl said that her parents were used by the Blackwell house and she did not want to tell them anything that could shock them. The albino reminded that the girl could always inform her parents when she arrived in the capital. The guy's words were interrupted by a sharp sound. The luxurious ship dangled on the water as if it were made of paper. The ship's captain reported that they needed two more people on deck. The man asked if everything was okay with Martin. The brown-haired man joked that it was very good that the guy didn't get seasick. Martin asked if everything was okay with the captain. Smiling, the man claimed that worse had happened. The captain asked to hold out a little longer, and promised that as soon as the rain stopped, they would be able to quickly find the island. Smiling, the guy agreed and went out onto the deck, looking at the cloudy sky. He prayed that his sister would be safe. The guy hoped that until he got to her, God would protect the girl. Arriving home, the woman was amazed to see Michael and Angie. The blonde asked what they were doing in the house. Cold sweat quickly flowed down the guy's cheeks. After greeting Michael, he announced that Angie had finished her embroidery. The guy said that due to heavy rain, they decided to wait for their parents in the house. Running up to her daughter, the woman asked why her face looked unhealthy. The woman asked if her daughter was tired. Angie hugged her mother tightly, and tears of happiness appeared in the girl's eyes. The woman suggested that the blonde had fallen on hard times. The man said they brought homemade soup for his daughter, and asked her to eat a little before she went to bed. The owner of the house asked if the guy also wanted to eat a little before leaving. Michael said that he already needed to return to the Blackwell estate. The albino explained that due to the storm, additional labor was needed. Angie turned around and called out to him. Smiling, the guy claimed that everything was fine and promised to come another time. Michael asked his friend to take a good rest. The girl thanked the guy. When the woman went back to the office, Mrs. Dunt said that the Lord would settle in the capital, and Angie would forget about it and live happily with her adoptive family. The woman asked whether this scenario would be the ideal ending. After hesitating a little, the blonde asked whether taking the amnosiac was really safe. The woman explained that it was better if the adopted rain lived with them than in terrible torment. The blonde was convinced that the girl's life would be very difficult if you stayed close to the Lord. The adoptive mother suggested that everything would work out well and she would remain under their care. Louise said that she was obliged to inform Kylik and asked the woman to behave as usual. Raindrops were rapidly falling down. Ignoring the puddles, Michael ran towards the house. All the guy's clothes and shoes were completely wet. The blonde remembered that the woman ordered to get rid of it when the thunder roared. 
The brunette said that he must play his role properly. Breathing heavily, the guy ran to the greenhouse. Smiling, the gentleman realized that she would never belong to him. Drops ran down the guy's face in quick streams. Michael had a crazy smile on his face. The brunette asked if there was another way. Hanging his head, the man asked for forgiveness and explained that the fastest time would be a week. The young master asked if there was anything that could be done. Jerome assured that there would be a safe sailing after the storm passed. The servant explained that if the fog cleared by then, people might suspect something. Kalik explained that it was impossible to continue deceiving people with such a cheap trick. The brunette recalled that people were trying to find out if it was possible to go to the outside world. The Lord realized that it was only a matter of time. The young master explained that sooner or later the residents would have the right to freely leave this place. The guy reminded that he would no longer need medicine. The man, breathing heavily, ran up to the guy and said that the Rizdals had left the estate after meeting with Miss Dunce. Brown reported that the last bottle of amnestic had disappeared from the warehouse. Horror flashed across the young master's eyes, and his heartbeat echoed in his ears. Brown said that Angie left the building early in the morning and was on the northern coast. Kalex's heart began to pound wildly, and beads of cold sweat appeared on his face. The Lord dropped his umbrella and headed for the carriage. Jerome warned the master that it was too dangerous to go there. The faithful servant asked permission to accompany Kai. The brunette extended his hand. At that time, he gave something valuable. Clutching the object tightly in his hand, the guy jumped into the saddle of a black horse. The horse galloped briskly along the wet paths. Thunder and lightning flashed over Kai's head. Entering the estate, Michael heard the sounds of gunfire. The guy looked around the corner, trying to understand what was happening. Many people shot at targets without understanding why the tranquilizers did not work. One of the men, in a trembling voice, asked to bring many chains as quickly as possible and shackle the victim in them. Trying not to attract too much attention, the guy walked along the corridors, which were splattered with blood. Screams and pleas for mercy were heard in the gloomy room. The shooter begged the man to spare them. The blonde man, whose robe and hands were smeared with blood, helped people breathe their last breath. A zombie-like creature was heading down the corridors. Michael held his breath as he watched what was once a man. The creature walked along long corridors, smearing the blood of its victims behind it. The creature's breathing was heavy, and a ring was visible on its finger. The zombie did not notice him and moved on. Drops of cold sweat ran down the blonde's face. Until that moment, the guy had no idea that it would look like this. Taking a sharp axe, the handle of which was splashed with scarlet liquid, the blonde decided to follow the creature. Michael wondered where it was going. The guy was sincerely afraid that he would head into the forest and turn towards the cliff. Angie begged her mother to go to the mainland and start a new life there. The girl tried to convince that if they could not get used to the new life, they could always return to their home island. Lowering her eyes, the woman asked if her daughter considered this such a simple activity. Mom assured that the capital was overflowing with capable maids and workers. The blonde asked what they would do there. The woman smiled and explained what she wanted, for their family to remain on the island to continue living a peaceful, happy life. With sadness in her eyes, the girl explained that she also wanted this. When the girl smelled the food, she almost vomited. The father asked if everything was okay with Angie. In a fit of nausea, the girl insisted that everything was fine. The blonde said that she would feel better if she lay down for a while. Looking at the sky outside the window, Angie realized that the Lord might soon go looking for her. The blonde understood that she came home without saying anything to him. The girl understood that she had to clearly express her intentions. Angie asked if her parents could consider her proposal. The blonde explained that they could start life with a clean slate off the island. Putting a smile on her face, my mother promised to discuss this with her husband. The woman asked if the blonde wanted to rest. Taking out a small bottle from the inside pocket of his jacket, the father promised to bring medicine to the girl. The man asked Angie to take the contents before going to bed. The blonde said that you need to drink everything at once, even if it seems bitter. The girl understood that she had no other choice and raised the glass to her mouth. Soon shots pierced the wall. The woman turned around and asked what happened. Angie dropped the glass with the unfortunate liquid. The blonde was genuinely stunned when she saw Kai aiming at her. The father ordered the blonde to go upstairs immediately. The man said that they had to leave and said that there was an escape route near the cliff. The guy, breathing heavily, held the revolver in his hand. Drops flowed down his hair the color of a raven feather, and madness was visible in his gaze.